Huddled masses outside the glass bowl in Toledo, Ohio on a cold night in mid-November. Wind chill in the teens as game time approaches, but the fire is burning in the hearts of the players and the coaches on college football primetime presented by Nikon. A spot in the MAC championship game is at stake tonight at the Glass Bowl here in Toledo. The Rockets with a record of 7-2. and two. They won 17 straight at home, taking on Northern Illinois. A Rockets win, and they clinch a spot in the MAC title game. They're 5-1 and one in the league. Northern Illinois is 4-2 and two and has to win its final two games to go to the championship game. Northern Illinois has never been to the MAC title game and needs to win tonight and then against Western Michigan on November 23rd on ESPN2. Toledo, if it loses tonight, would have to beat Bowling Green and Northern Illinois would have to lose to Western Michigan next week. Hi, everybody. Alongside Rod Gilmore and Trevor Maddich, I'm Dave Pash. Stacey Dale Schumann will join us shortly. Well, guys, both teams control their own destiny, but this series has been one-sided, and history certainly favors Toledo. The Rockets have won 11 straight, and they're 16-1 and in the Glass Bowl against Northern Illinois. The only win for the Huskies came in 1972, and back then, Trevor, you were a defensive back, and Rod, you had hair. <laughs> well, that's true, but, you know, I didn't help myself back then. I can't help myself tonight, because what you want to do is play for a game like this, to get to November, and that's what these teams have done. Toledo's done it an awful lot. If they win tonight, it'll be their fourth win in the last five years of the Mac West title. And part of the reason they've done it is because of quarterback Bruce Gradkowski. He's a senior player who's done a tremendous job. He's a veteran guy. He knows how to play in big games. He's done it before. He's played through injury. He's played through bad weather. He knows how to do that. And tonight is his last home game on senior night. You know he's going to bring it tonight. And Trevor, that gives Toledo a lot of confidence. But I don't think Northern Illinois has the same kind of confidence coming into tonight. Well, they don't because rather than a senior quarterback, they've got a freshman. Dan Nicholson took over last week when starter Phil Horvath broke his arm against Central Michigan. He said he didn't have time to get nervous in that game because one minute he was standing on the sideline with a clipboard, the next he was in the game. But now he's had a week and a half to get nervous. And the question is, how will this freshman respond to the pressure of making his first start in the biggest game of the regular season? And how will he respond to the weather? Typical mid-November weather here in Toledo. And Stacy Dale Schumann will have that story and how it could impact some of the key players in this game when we return. But first, a report from Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, Saturday night on ESPN, Georgia Tech plays Miami. The Yellow Jackets might have the services in that game of defensive back Reuben Houston. That is of consequence because, as we told you last night, a superior court judge in Atlanta has ordered Georgia Tech to reinstate Houston despite the fact that he faces felony drug charges. Houston was arrested in connection with a marijuana distribution ring and is charged with conspiracy to possess and distribute 100 pounds of marijuana. The judge had said that he was hesitant to get involved in university policy. However, in his opinion, the Tech's treatment of Houston after he came up on these charges differed from Tech's treatment of other student athletes who had run afoul of the law. Dave Brain, the athletic director at Georgia Tech, says he will abide by the judge's ruling, but did say that the same circumstances were a little bit different because they haven't had a student athlete in quite this same situation before. Coming up at halftime, Rod Gilmore, who is also a lawyer, will join us to talk about this precedent and ha what it says for other schools who might run into similar situations situations in the NCAA. We're set for a little football coming up in just a little while from the Mac. Bruce Gradkowski trying to get that rocket offense going against Northern Illinois. It's coming up in a bit. If you're looking for answers from an auto parts store, get ready. Advance Auto Parts is working harder. It is typical mid-November weather here in Toledo. Temperature 30 degrees. Wind chill 16 as we send it from the warm, toasty press box to the freezing cold sideline and Stacy Dale Schumann stays. Yeah, I hope you guys are real cozy up there with some hot chocolate and whipped cream. It's freezing down here, you guys. You know, Dave, for a team that hasn't beaten Toledo since 1989, life certainly doesn't get any easier for Northern Illinois. As you mentioned, they lost their starting quarterback. It is windy. Very windy. They lost their starting quarterback. Their star running back is injured, and they will start a freshman quarterback, Dan Nicholson, who's never started a game in his career. And he'll have to deal with what I stand in now. 35 mile per hour wind gusts, 25 degree temperatures. It feels like about 10 degrees, and definitely some snow flurries. How will the young quarterback fare? That's the question. He told me he's excited. He's had a calm week of preparation, but he'll face a very feisty and talented Toledo defense, Dave. All right, Stace, we'll send down a bandana or one of Rod's hats for you. <laughs> Keep that uh, hair oh, from blowing around. I tell you, Stacy's right, though. That, that wind, 35 mile per hour gusts, 
That's like the worst enemy for a quarterback. It's hard to throw and win. But what happens is it, you, you work and you run and you play football. You get a little sheen of sweat under those pads, and then you come on the sideline, and that sheen of sweat freezes on you. Snow flurries and about 25 mile per hour winds. It does not compare, though, to what we saw on ESPN2 last night in the game at Oxford at Miami of Ohio, where they had to delay that game two and a half hours. A ton of rain and even heavier winds in that game. But it's much colder here tonight than it was last night as Toledo gets set to boot it away. Now, this is what Except you expect. To receive. Northern Illinois will boot it away. This is what you expect in November in the Midwest. Snow, wind, cold weather. Boy, it did come on fast, though. There's Joe Novak in his 10th year, five straight winning seasons. Early in his career, Northern Illinois lost 23 straight. Novak, however, has never beaten Toledo and Tom Amstutz. Novak 0-8 against Toledo. Amstutz 4-0 against Novak. And Amstutz, uh, fresh off signing a two-year contract extension through 2009. Just signed that the other day. And Tom Amstutz works some late hours, but he's not always in the office, as you see him there. Well, that was about an hour and a half before the game, and he's still working on things. You know, every last detail right up until game time. A lot of times you see him on his deck there. They have a grill, and he's out there cooking for his assistant coaches. More on that story with Stacy as we go along here. And we are underway from Toledo. It'll be Steve Odom at the 10 on the opening kickoff. And there's good running lanes. And Odom is all the way out to the 43-yard line. Montel Clanton on the special teams tackle. Bruce Gradkowski, a marketing major who spent time selling tickets in the offseason playing his last home game. He's led Toledo to a MAC title, two division championships, and two bowl games. Big night for him, his last home game here at the Glass Bowl, and quite a number of NFL scouts to watch this game tonight. They want to see him perform in bad weather. I know you talked with a, a scout from one team earlier. I did as well, and word is that uh, Gradkowski, at least uh, some of the scouts feel, will be a fourth to fifth round draft choice, depending on how he fares in a couple of the postseason games that he'll be taking part in. And then at the combine. There's a clock issue on the field. The scoreboard clock had 11.55 instead of the appropriate 14.55. They got that worked out now. Tom Amstutz, outside of three years at Navy in a week at Missouri, has spent his whole life in Toledo. He played here, was an assistant coach here, and is in his fifth year as the head coach here. We talked to him about that contract extension, and one of the things that prospective student athletes will ask him is, how long are you going to be around? You've had a lot of success. Obviously, getting the contract extension will ease some of those fears for potential recruits. His name has been mentioned in the last several years for higher profile jobs, but he tells us that he doesn't want to go anywhere. His family lives here, his wife's family lives here. He's been a Toledo guy pretty much all his life, and this is the only job he's ever wanted. As a matter of fact, he says that he doesn't even have a resume. He's so settled here. So first down from the Toledo 43, and Gretkowski on play action. And Gretkowski can run, and he gets about three or four yards as he scoots out of play. Larry English forced him out of play. Trinity Dawson is the running back on this uh, football team, a career high 167 yards against Ohio. A week and a half ago, Nick Moore, Steve Odom, and Pete Leftley, the receivers, John Allen, the tight end. Chris Wakeman, the lone senior on the offensive line at right guard. Ada Besson and Agua are juniors. Perkins and Greco are sophomores. So a three-yard pickup, and now Gradkowski is out of the shotgun. And the quarterback running again. And picks up good yardage, gets the first down before he's banged out of play. Adriel Hansbro made the tackle, but Gradkowski got the first down. Such a good, solid tackle on the corner by Hansbro here. Good roll and tackle right at the legs. Doesn't try to get him up high. Look at that. Wipes him right out. It's a good tackle. 
Really good tackle. Gradkowski owns five single game passing records, five single season passing records, eight career records, but he's run the first two plays here tonight. That's Washington in motion. And Gradkowski fakes the lateral, and deep middle Odom is wide open. Grabbed to the ankles at the 22 by Dustin Oakshit. Gain of about 23 and a first down. And look at the shot Gradkowski takes to deliver this ball. He's from Pittsburgh, and he's a tough kid. He doesn't mind taking shots like that. As a matter of fact, he calls it a point of pride. That was Quince Holman who smacked Gradkowski to the turf. So after the 22-yard gain, a first down at the 23. And Dawson with his first carry. And no running room. Abel will lower the head and get to the 20. Blaylark and Utchik on the tackle. So Northern Illinois without Craig Rush, its top pass rusher, who has five sacks. Larry English starting for him, along with Holman, Holy Cross, and West. Tim McCarthy, redshirt freshman middle linebacker, a key guy to watch, along with Hutton and Blaylark. And identical twins at the cornerback spot. Alva and Adriel Hansbro from Madison, Wisconsin. Ray Smith and Dustin Utchik are the safeties. Second and seven from the 20. Gradkowski with his third running play already and hit pretty hard again. Blaylark on the stop at the 18-yard line, gain of two. This is senior night, not only for Gradkowski, but for Trinity Dawson. And but some great memories for those players. Back championship, couple of division titles. Gradkowski, as important to this franchise as any quarterback in recent memory has been to their school. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the only quarterback in Division I history with two straight years of a completion percentage better than 70%. He's at 66% this year. Pass play. And a little miscommunication there between the quarterback, Gradkowski, and the wide receiver, Nick Moore. And so it's a fourth down and four, and Tom Amstutz will go for it on fourth down two to three times per game, and it appears that he's going to go for it here. Well, that's a little bit against his philosophy. He was quoted as saying he will typically go for uh, the field goal if he has a chance to get ahead in the ball game. It's, it's when he's tacking on points that he'll take the shot on fourth down. So this is a little bit out of character for him right now. And a chance for Northern Illinois to get a little bit of confidence here if it can stop Gradkowski and the Rockets on fourth and four. Here comes pressure. Gradkowski levels again as he gets rid of it. And it's broken up incomplete, but a flag down. Hansbrough's going to get called for interference. It was Nick Moore who was the intended receiver. And that's just a case of Moore having a size advantage over Hansbro, who's only 5'10", and Moore goes at 6'4". Because Hansbro is in good position here. He just has to turn around and play the ball, but he's worried about the size, and he holds him down with the right arm wrapped around the backside. And this is man coverage because it's an all-out blitz. Yep, he just shields him off with his body. It's an all-out blitz. This ball was released just after the hit. There's the problem. It's the right arm. When you grab that backside, if you turn a little, that's when they get you for that. If you just place it there, they don't flag you. But you see, he was turning for leverage with that right arm. So first down and goal at the four. That's Dawson in the backfield. And Gradkowski changing things up. It's Dawson to the one-yard line. Alva Hansbrough on the tackle, three yards in the play. Hey, so how calm and cool is Gradkowski? You got a senior, bad weather, snowing, wind, everything, emotional senior night. He just comes in and coolly marches his team down the field. Coolly, but took some bruises. He took four big hits, two on passes, two on runs in this opening drive. Dawson, who just carried for the 600th time in his career. Number 601, fighting for the end zone, won't get there. Good stand by the Husky defense. Zach Holy Cross, the first to greet Dawson. 
Well, the key here is penetration. He wants to go off right tackle, but with the penetration, he has to stop and make the cut sharper than he wants to. When he got to the line, he didn't have the power to drive through. Tim McCarthy also in on the stop, and it's third down and goal. As you look at the numbers on Dawson, also a terrific student. Finance major, better than 3.0 GPA. Here's Dawson looking for running room, fighting for the goal line again. And he won't get in. He should have lost yardage. Great second effort just to get back to the line of scrimmage and almost cross into the end zone. Blaylark, the first to hit Dawson on the play. Well, you know he's going to go for it. I mean, he went for it on fourth and four, didn't want the field to go down on the inch line. He's got to go for it. Plus, if they don't make it, they put a freshman quarterback on his own one-inch line. Toledo Tom never afraid to go for it on fourth down. Second fourth down attempt already on this drive. I think your point is well taken, Trevor. You have a freshman, if you miss it down there, bad weather in a crowd, that could be really bad for Northern Illinois. So Tom Amstutz and the Rockets on the doorstep of their opening drive in Toledo tonight. No score in Toledo, but a fourth down and goal from the one coming up for the Rockets. But first, we check in with Stacy. You know, Dave, interestingly, Tom Anstutz has removed the benches from the sideline for his players. He doesn't want them sitting down. He wants them to stay up, stay active, stay involved, keep the energy and the heat level high. On the other side of the field, they've got benches, guys, but they're not sitting. It's very cold down here, Dave. Wind chill right around 15 degrees here in Toledo on a fourth down and goal. Second fourth down attempt on this drive for the Rockets. Brad Kowski on the keeper. No signal yet. It's a touchdown. There you see Brad Kowski taking a shot. How does he get in? Where'd he go? Where is he? Ball's back over. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Referee. I'm here. He got lost in there. Fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Now Jason Robbins on for the PAT. So Toledo strikes first. A drive that took a little bit less than four minutes. And Brad Kowski with his fourth rushing touchdown this season. A 10th play drive. Toledo has dominated opponents in the first quarter this year. Well, it's certainly appropriate that on the opening drive, the senior quarterback who's played in a lot of big games really spearheaded that drive, running and throwing. And when you spearhead, you're the first thing that hits. And in this case, he got hit an awful lot. Look at take a shot right there and got landed on by Holman. And that was a helmet to helmet shot. It could have had a foul on that. And this is the touchdown. He's underneath right now about a thousand pounds of players at one point or another. This Toledo team is number one in the MAC in scoring. Good for 13th of the country, averaging 37 points per game. As you look at Gradkowski's numbers on that drive, two passes, four rushes by Gradkowski. He grew up in Pittsburgh. How often do you think he played in weather like this? Probably almost every week. Yep. <laughs> It's kind of like Vin Diesel there, doesn't it? Jason Robbins to kick off. So Adriel Hansbro and Chateau Adriel Powers. Hansbro back deep to receive. Back you, for uh, Northern Illinois. You go to a lot of movies, huh? I've got nothing else to do, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Diesel. football and go to movies. It's rather tragic. <laughs> Vin Diesel, what was your favorite one, huh? Uh, Fast and the Furious. Fast and the Furious. And Robbins angles this one towards the sideline. Here's Hansbro. about the 23 yard line. We're going to see a lot of that tonight. Players going hard even after the whistle in this rivalry. Toledo wins. It is in the MAC championship game. Northern Illinois is going to need redshirt freshman Dan Nicholson to come through. It's his first ever start. He's from Chicago. If Nicholson and the Huskies win their last two games, they will go to their first ever MAC championship game. There's Phil Horvath, who broke his forearm last week. Nicholson came in and threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns in relief. And 
Garrett Wolf starts the game at running back despite an injury, but it's a pass play to Powers. Nicholson right on the mark, hitting Chatone Powers. Gain of about 23 and a first down. Chamberlain on the tackle. Well, Adrian Davis did not start. It was Garrett Wolf, despite a knee injury starting. Nordeen is the tight end. Heard Davis and Davis are the wide receivers. Pretty good offensive line for North Illinois. Free, Lewick, Van Acker, the top center in the conference a year ago. Eben Hoke and Bros. Garrett Wolf was a game time decision, and he did start the game. Last year led the Mac in rushing 1,650 yards. He's missed the last three games with that knee injury, but is in there tonight. Pass play again. And Nicholson has Britt Davis. Two Nicholson for two for the former Davis. option quarterback in high school, Dan Nicholson. Looking at the 3-4 defense for Toledo. Patrick Clark is the nose man. Sean Williamson and J.P. McKasick are the defensive ends. Anthony Jordan, the leading tackler on this team. Mike Alston, the leader in sacks. David Thomas, pretty good player, and Mike Chamberlain. Safety Keon Jackson accounting for six opponents' turnovers this year. Morris, Herbert, and Malone in the secondary for Toledo with him. Now Nicholson, as we mentioned, an option quarterback in high school, so he's got some running skills. Takes a while to go down at the 39-yard line. Anthony Jordan, the leading tackler for Toledo, was the first man to hit him. Uh, Nicholson ran a little bit of option at Brother Rice High School in the Chicago area and has started fast tonight. You know, good decisions, throwing the ball well. I'd say so far, what, about an A, B-plus for him right now? Absolutely. He's actually got the strongest arm of all the quarterbacks, but as a freshman, he doesn't have the playbook down all the way top to bottom yet. So far, so good. To that point, Trevor, in fact, Novak said that he's got perhaps the best arm that Novak's ever had at Northern Illinois. He takes off again. Second straight running play. It's creamed by Patrick Clark downfield. But still positive yardage. North Illinois is inside the Toledo 35. Well, he may have gotten off to a good start on the field, but you know how freshmen are. They don't even know how to buckle their own helmet. <laughs> Help me out, buddy. It goes like this. See? <laughs> His hands are probably freezing. It's got to be hard to grip that thing. Yeah, well, he's got to throw a football. He ought to be able to buckle his helmet. I guess that's a good point. Opening drive here for North Illinois, second and five at the 34. Wolf has not touched the ball yet until now. And the 5'7", 175 pound back to the 30 for about four. Williamson and Alston team up to make the tackle. Now you may think that Wolf is a small back, but he's a strong guy. I mean, 175 pounds. He can bench press 225 18 times. And uh, that much strength and that much of a compact frame means that he's very explosive in his cuts. And when he gets to you, he can explode into you. Came out of nowhere to be first team all back last year, placing A.J. Harris, the normal starter, when he got injured. And here the ball is on the ground at the 29 yard line. Toledo says that it has it. J.P. McKasick forced the fumble. That was Nicholson bringing out a little bit of the, of the option from his days at Brother Rice, and the ball bounced his way. It did. Brian Van Acker, the center, was one of the people that was down there. It's Britt Davis who is in the game at quarterback right now, and he came to North Illinois as a, as a quarterback, running the option on that particular play. So they get the first down via the fumble. That might be the last time we see Britt Davis at quarterback after that. 7-0 Toledo, but Northern Illinois is driving midway through the first. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime is presented by the Nikon D50 Digital SLR. Incredible pictures made incredibly easy. And in part by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Back in Chile, Toledo, Northern Illinois trailing the Rockets 7-0. And the reason that uh, Dan Nicholson, the quarterback, was out of the game and 
Britt Davis was in there running the option was because Nicholson had an equipment problem. But he is back on the field. First down. And here's Britt Davis on the end around. And nice play by Anthony Jordan to trip up Davis, gain of only about a yard. Well, not only did Nicholson have the equipment problems, you see what happened a couple of plays ago, but they also burned a timeout so that they could get his helmet fixed and get him back on the field. That was during the play there where Britton Davis fumbled the ball, but fumbled it forward and it was recovered for a first down. From the 27. Nicholson looking good so far, and it appears that Britt Davis is his favorite target, whether it's passing or in the run game. It'll be close to a first down. Trevor, that was a strong throw. And a well-designed play for the young quarterback. Davis lined up wide, motioned inside to get, allow himself more running room back toward the sideline. Then when he came back out, there was a lot of space for the freshman quarterback to throw the ball. Do you think that just having Garrett Wolf in the game, even though he's only carried it one time, changes maybe how Toledo approaches things defensively? Well, I think they have to respect the fact that he can run the ball. Hey, he averages six and a half yards a carry. You have to be aware of him, even though he's been out for three games. And certainly not 100% tonight. This is his second carry. And on the draw, he's stacked up at about the 14-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. And, and the thing to watch with Wolf is, you know, he, he's had the bad knee. He's been out three games. Cold weather. You want to keep him in the game because when you take him out, there's a tendency for him to get tight and for that whole thing to tighten up, and you want to keep him loose. Yeah, and Novak's philosophy fits right into Wolf's talents and his abilities he wants to pound the ball and in the Mac which is a wide open passing league this is a real dinosaur old school philosophy play fake to Wolf on second down and Nicholson to the end zone touchdown Nicholson was perfect on that drive and he hits Jake Nordine for the score that's the first touchdown this year for Nordine and I'll tell you this Nicholson looked like a point guard Getting an entry pass into his big man. His big man posts up inside. Look at him. He just delivers it to him right there. That's a nice entry pass. 14-yard touchdown. Pretty impressive drive by Northern Illinois after Toledo marched down the field and had to convert two fourth downs to score a touchdown. Nendick with a PAT, and we are tied at seven. Tomorrow night, a 2K Sports Coaches versus Cancer Classic semifinal doubleheader. First at 7, Wake Forest tips off against Florida. Then at 9, Jerry McNamara leads Syracuse against Texas Tech. On ESPN2, second round action for the NIT season tip-off. At 8, Sam... So Dan Nicholson... And his first start goes four for four passing on his first drive for 55 yards and a touchdown to Jake Nordine. And North Illinois in 10 plays bounces back and ties the game at seven. What was with the mittens on the sideline though? Well, we saw how much trouble he had just snapping his chin strap. He's got to keep those hands warm. I don't know. Rodkowski, you think he's got them on? Yeah, he's from Pittsburgh, probably not. Although. Nicholson from Chicago as that kick sails out of bounds and Toledo will have the option here to probably just take the ball at the 35 yard line. Nigel Morris isn't even a corner. He's a, a safety. He's a cornerback. He gives up 80 pounds to Nordine. And so this is like Carl Malone boxing out Muggsy Bogues. There's just too much body for Morris to run around by the time the ball gets there. You mentioned basketball. And we've got some basketball news for you coming up. And I, I tell you, I think this rivals Ohio State, Michigan. The news that we have for you that we'll deliver a little bit later. Uh, I got to wait. You're going to have to wait. OK. All right. I can be patient. And it involves somebody on this crew. There's a hint. First down to the 40, 40 yard, 35 yard line, rather. And Grankowski in the rollout. And the pass under shot. He was trying for Odom, and a flag comes in. This time, Alva Hansbro will get called for interference. It was Adriel Hansbro on a fourth down play on the first drive, and this time his twin brother, Alva, gets busted. It is so hard to play good defense. Pass interference is almost a right of, 
a, a right for the offense these days. And it, it shouldn't be, you say? No. Pass interference. <laughs> Defense, number 11, penalized 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And these are like two guys positioning yeah. for the ball, and the ball's not even catchable. I mean, if anything, it's as much on yeah. Odom, if not more on Odom. He was the one who kind of right. shoved Hansborough out of the way yeah. to get position. You know, you got a right to go for the ball. For your sake, Rod, I know you're thankful that they can't review it. That's the second pass interference of the game. First down at midfield. Here's Dawson. Barreling forward to the 44 for about six yards. True freshman Phil Brown out of Chicago on the tackle. Toledo has won 11 straight in this series. 14 in a row at home against Northern Illinois dating back to 1972. Last year, the Rockets went into Northern Illinois when the Huskies were ranked 22nd. Toledo was unranked, and Toledo won 31-17 and ended up winning the match. Brad Kowski with a ton of time. But his pass is nearly picked off. Almost intercepted by Utschick. Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions were looking for Penn State's first Big Ten championship since 1994 and the team's first ever BCS Bowl appearance. Only the Michigan State Spartans stand in their way. It's college football presented by Nokia on ESPN Saturday at 4 Eastern time. All right, our first uh, college football primer, Penn State, earns a BCS berth with a win against Michigan State. Yes or no? Should be Penn State, but you never know which Michigan State team will show up, and if they're on their game, they can get very hot. Penn State has the tiebreaker with Ohio State having beaten the Buckeyes earlier this year as Odom gets lit up. It was Blaylock that drilled him, and the pass was a little bit off target. It'll be fourth down, and Toledo might go for it again. Uh, this would be a bad spot to go for it, especially after your defense just gave up seven. Oh, by the way, Penn State, Michigan State? Yeah. Uh, I think there's just a little bit of karma going on with Penn State this year. You know, they play smart, they play well. I, I think Penn State's going to finish it off and win the Big Ten. Brett Kern to punt it away. Deep to receive the punt. Chaton Powers will receive the punt. First time that Toledo has not gone for it on fourth down here in the first quarter. And that thing gets caught up in the air, and Toledo is all over it. There's a penalty flag down. Toledo might have interfered with Chaton Powers. They're going to down it at the three-yard line, but again, a penalty marker down to the 21. I think the Rocket player ran into Powers as he was trying to get out of the way. Definitely a fair catch call, no doubt about it. No. Well, wait now. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta no. That he, yeah, yeah. And, that and was, the other, he's he's the just trying to disguise down. it. Yeah. He's not trying to catch the ball. Now, if he would have hit him, it would have been a problem. But I think he touched him though, and you're not allowed to even touch yeah, him. This guy's running out of the play. They gotta pick that flag up. There's no there flag yeah. on the play. So it's not. So Northern Illinois will have to start this drive at a three, but based on what we saw out of Nicholson on his first drive as a starter, I don't think this will phase him. Well, Penn State, as we mentioned, wins the game and goes to the BCS. Michigan State has really struggled since that early season win against Notre Dame. Yeah, although they do have the quarterback that will have the best opportunity to win against that Penn State defense. And Drew Stanton. Nicholson passing out of his end zone. Very calm and cool finds Nordine. And Nordine fighting for yardage until the whistle sounds. A gain of about five of the play. Chamberlain on the tackle. A lot of confidence in the young quarterback. Redshirt freshman at last drive. He took him down the field for a score. Hit receivers as he moved in the pocket, as he stood in the pocket, and drilled a touchdown pass to Jake Nordine to finish it off. One of the reasons that that was successful, beyond the fact that Dan Nicholson executed well, is that Toledo stacked inside against the run. They're daring Nicholson to beat him. 
is replacing Phil Horvath, who broke his forearm last week. Nicholson had only 14 prior snaps before he had to come in and replace Horvath last week. Garrett Wolf gets nothing on that carry. It'll bring up third down. Horvath had a two to one and touchdown to interception ratio, but uh, he was not a veteran starter. A few starts last year and a few this year. Even so, this year, up until the time he got hurt, he was the only quarterback in the nation, and still is actually, with over 70% completion percentage. Very, very efficient at running this offense. They do a really good job at Northern Illinois. John Bond, the offensive coordinator, Joe Novak, the head coach. 10 and 2 two years ago, 9 and 3 last year. Look for pressure now on the young quarterback. And be 5 and 4 this year, Northern Illinois Huskies come up short. The ball comes out again. That's the second fumble by Northern Illinois. Toledo has the ball. Mike Alston forced it out. No signal yet whether it's Rocket football. And now they are signaling that it is Northern Illinois ball. That uh, the Huskies maintained possession. Doug Free, the left tackle, came up with it. They were short of the marker anyway on that third down play. So Northern Illinois will have to punt the ball. Well, they come with pressure, but they play zone behind it so they have a chance to look up the receivers. And Powers takes a big hit. They might review that. Looked like Powers may have lost the ball before the knee went down. Northern Illinois trying to snap it. You would think they'd snap it as quickly as they can before the technical advisor upstairs. And the punt is nearly blocked. And Odom will let this one bounce. And Toledo's going to have tremendous field position at the 38-yard line. Well, you heard Reese Davis mention this right before we kicked off here tonight, that an indicted player at Georgia Tech, Reuben, uh, Reuben Houston, is... Uh, being allowed to return under a court order issued on Tuesday. Houston was charged with conspiracy to distribute marijuana. He was suspended from the football team. But the courts are saying that he deserves to go back and play football. But as you heard Reese say at the top of the show, the courts were addressing unequal treatment by Georgia Tech. I want to get to more on... The attorney's thoughts here uh, after this play. First down of the 38. And Radkowski going to dump it off. Great play. Here's Dawson into the open field. Dawson to the five. Touchdown, Toledo. the center Hassan Adebesan take a look at the block now he's going to stay on his guy and then continue to, to throw it continue to sustain and that's what allows the cutback lane yeah. 20th touchdown pass of the year for Gradkowski the extra point is good Trinity Dawson had two receiving touchdowns against Ohio in their last game and gets one here, and there's some pushing and shoving going on after the play. And Ridley flags are flying. Great blocking, but a great job of cutting by Dawson to his left. He had great vision on that to find the space and then outrun the defense. And we have snow. We have a lot of snow. Snow just started coming down. Uh, once the players went into their extracurricular activity like it was on cue. And there's a penalty flag down to the play. A one play drive, so clearly that punt by Brett Kern set up then the opportunity for the defense to stop Northern Illinois deep and force the Huskies to punt out of their own end zone. Going to be offsetting penalties. Hey, you see, it starts right over there. A little extra blocking at the end of the play, and then everybody else gets involved. And now you'll get the obligatory personal foul on each side. Well, they have to make this call, though. They can't let this game get out of control. There's already been some big hit. That's like hockey. Pull the guy's jersey up and <laughs> over his head. I think it's his own teammate did that. <laughs> Toledo, the second most penalized team in the Mid-American Conference. North of Illinois, third. 
Rod, I want to get more of your thoughts on the whole situation with Reuben Houston and Georgia Tech being allowed by the courts to return to the school and play football, even though he was suspended by Georgia Tech. But we have to go back to, to the basic facts, which is you start with there is a code of conduct at Georgia Tech, like at most schools, and Houston was suspended for being arrested for a felony. The court held that there were other students who had legal problems, and they weren't dismissed until they had to allow him back. Penalty flag in Northern Illinois will start at the 35. Yeah. So, so that's your, your background of the case, and obviously you start to wonder what's the implication of a decision like that. And how does it affect maybe some other situations if it comes up at other universities? Well, you just heard the call from the official kicking the ball out of bounds. Well, the implication, you start with this very basic fact, which is this is a lower court decision in Fulton County in Georgia. It doesn't have any legal impact on any other university anywhere else. It, it was an injunction. The court made the order. It applies to Georgia Tech only. No one else right now. Huskies take over at their 35. Nicholson to Wolf on a little screen. And Wolf, who's very shifty in the open field, gets about 12 to the 47. Tyrell Herbert eventually brought him to the floor. And Dave, just to get back to that point, obviously that case is going to draw some interest by athletic directors and university personnel all over the country wondering if their standard of conduct policies would be looked at by courts. Do they have to tweak things? And they may very well look at those things, but there is not any legal impact on those universities by this decision yet. And Rob will have more on that at halftime as he joins Reese Davis. Right now it's 14-7 Toledo. And another pass play that is caught out in the flat. Pulled by pass. Sam Hurd, their Complete leading receiver. 54th catch on the year for Hurd. Chamberlain. Chamberlain pushed him out of play. It's a gain of a handful there on first down. Ball spotted just inside the 48-yard line. Second down. And we have some movement. Penalty and a couple of penalty markers are in on the play. Full start. Number 65 of the offense. Penalized five yards. Still second down. So it goes from second and three to second eight. We mentioned Sam Hurd catching his first pass of the night, 54th on the year. Stacy has more on him. Yeah, guys, Sam Hurd, interestingly, only picked up football when he was a junior in high school. He said, I wasn't interested in sports. I liked math and I liked video programming. I wanted to be involved in scholastic activities, not sports. Did a little bit of track and field along the way, but now he's a big time performer for this team, guys. And they got Britt Davis in a quarterback again, and he fumbles for the second time, and each time he's fumbled, it's turned out to be positive Britt yardage. Davis, this time here. he picks it up and takes it back to the original line of scrimmage. You know, part of the problem with fumbling in this kind of weather conditions is that it is very, very cold and very, very dry. So the pores on the ball, the leather of the ball close up and the pores on your hand close up. And that makes two very slick surfaces. I would much rather have a wet football than one that is very cold and very dry. Third down, this might be time where they throw to Sam Hurd just to uh, finish the point on Hurd. He's 15th of the country in receiving yards right now. Not bad for a guy who wasn't sure if he was going to play football. And he's right on cue as he makes the catch for the first down at the 42-yard line. So two catches for Sam Hurd, and that will move the chains for NIU. Well, he's the guy. He's a six-foot-four-inch receiver. Math or no math, he knows how to get his body in position to catch a ball there. That's probably geometry. He probably figured out the angles and all that kind of good stuff. Well, a lot of it is just pure hostility. I don't know if that's a math discipline, but <laughs> this guy will get after defensive backs when he blocks downfield. He tries to take their head clean off. Dan Nicholson, by the way, is nine out of nine in his first start. They go back to the ground, and there's no running room for Wolf. A host of Rockets around him, including Mike Alston, the leader in sacks for Toledo this year. No gain officially. Wolf just didn't look like himself to me as you take a look at Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator for Toledo on the side. He was concerned about Wolf, but based on what we saw in that last play, 
Wolf doesn't look like himself. I mean, he's not changing direction quickly. He rounded his cut that time. Pretty slow moving out there. He's got an injury. He's missed the last three games. Still 856 yards in a year coming in. Nicholson stays perfect as he connects with Nordeen. And as the linesman uh, falls down, slipping on the uh, first down marker, it appears that uh, NIU gets the first down. Chamberlain the tackle. It is slick down there on the field. We've had snow off and on. Temperatures around 25 to 30 degrees. Wind chills in the teens. But Trinity Dawson is hot. 38-yard touchdown catch, and Toledo leads by seven after one. A perfect first quarter for redshirt freshman Dan Nicholson making his first start went 10 out of 10 and a touchdown pass in that opening quarter. Meanwhile, Bruce Gretkowski is only two out of five passing, but Toledo leads. Here Nicholson gets crushed. Keon Jackson on the safety blitz hammers him back at the 40-yard line. Nicholson replacing the injured Phil Horvath. You see during pregame. Uh, minus nine yards there on the sack. First career start for Nicholson. Numbers couldn't be better. They go three wide here. And Nicholson has time to throw. And Hurd dropped it. First incompletion for Nicholson, but it wasn't his fault. That would have been a gain of at least 10 or 15. Hurd had some green in front of him. And that's why he dropped it. I mean, Hurd had so much green, he took a peek to see where he wanted to go and just dropped it. He took his eyes off the ball. He's their best receiver, three touchdowns, 266 receiving yards against Central Michigan in their last game. But Toledo did not blitz on that second and long. Let's see if they come after him on third and long. They don't. But Nicholson is flushed out anyway. And his pass is just shy of Chaton Power is incomplete. It would have been a few yards short of the first down anyway. It's fourth down to 19. You know, we spend a lot of time talking about time of possession. There you see it here, almost twice as much time for Northern Illinois, but they're down by seven. The game is about explosion plays. And Toledo's had a couple of them. The 38-yard touchdown pass and run for Trinity Dawson being one of the big ones. Well, that was the difference. That was based on getting good field position. That drive started at the 38 because the Toledo punter pinned Northern Illinois deep. Now, Andy Dittbenner is going to try to do the same to Steve Odom. Try to pin him deep and Forrest Gradkowski to start inside his tent. Low snap and off the side of the foot, but this may work to Northern Illinois' advantage. And Gradkowski and the Rockets will start at their 12 yard line. Saturday at 1 Eastern, join ABC Sports for one of the great rivalries in all of sports Ohio State and Michigan. Those of you on the West Coast will see Cal Stanford at 4 Pacific. Check local listings for the games in your area. Ohio State needs to win and have a Penn State loss. Michigan needs to win, and Penn State has to lose to go to the BCS. Who do you guys think will win this game? I think Ohio State wins. I think they win pretty big. Michigan has struggled off and on this year. I think Ohio State just has too much on defense for them to move the ball effectively. Michigan has won four in a row. Ohio State has won five straight to get Rod's take after this. Here is Dawson grabbed from behind. Blaylark on the stop, about three yards downfield. Rivalry games are just so tough. I don't see Michigan being blown out of this thing, but I do think Ohio State will win. They've won three out of the last four. A five-game win streak there. Yeah, you look at, remember John Cooper just struggled to beat Michigan, and then Jim Tressel comes in. He's three and one. Yeah. That's a great record against your arch rival. I tell you, we've been here for a couple of days, and it's been awfully uh, loud about Ohio State, Michigan. And yeah, we're about halfway. We're about uh, 45 minutes to an hour from both Columbus and Ann Arbor. Pass into the flat, and Hopkins, the tight end, takes it to about the 18. 
Third down coming up. Well, if Toledo wins this game here tonight at the glass bowl against Northern Illinois, the Rockets are going to the MAC championship game. They've won 11 straight in this series, have not lost at home to NIU since 1972. If Northern Illinois wins this game and wins next week's game, it will go to the MAC championship game for the first time. Wind chill at 16 degrees. Snow flurries off and on here tonight. And a third and three for Bruce Gradkowski playing his final home game. The senior out of Pittsburgh running again and spun down right at the marker at the 22. Looks like he's going to be short as Holy Cross made the tackle for Northern Illinois. Talk about that cold weather, 16 degree wind chill factor here. Probably going to see some of that later this week. This weekend, Michigan, Ohio State, probably going to be cold and maybe even wet or snowy there. And the cold makes artificial turf much harder. When you hit the ground and it's cold, it's like hitting a very, very solid surface. No give. You know, we got in Tuesday night. The lead story on the news was Ohio State, Michigan. On Tuesday, when they had a game in the city the next day. And this takes an incredible hop, forcing Powers to pick it up at the 18-yard line. Powers will take it to about the 26. Keon Jackson on the tackle. We mentioned we have some huge basketball news for you. We will reveal that news to you when we come back to Toledo after this. Well, many of you know Stacey Dale Schumann as the cardiac Canadian from her days with the Washington Mystics of the WNBA. Not only could she take it to the goal, but she can stick it from the outside as well. But Stacey Dale Schumann hung up her basketball sneakers to be part of ESPN. And I understand, Stacey, you have some news regarding your basketball career. <laughs> well, you know, Dave, I've decided to return to the game. Uh, I took a summer off, but having been able to compete with the likes of yourself on the road during this college football season, it's kind of revived myself. and really made me want to get back in the gym so I really credit my crew you know Kim Belton Dave Pash Trevor Maddich Rod Gilmore and you always know that this girl right here will take you guys anytime what is it with <laughs> these athletes who can't stay retired <laughs> she's back almost as big news as when Michael came back to Chicago here's Garrett Wolf and Wolf Gets close to the first down marker. Looks like he has it at the 37-yard line. And this is the news of the day. Stacey Dale Schumann is returning. That is true. She is returning to the WNBA. After taking a summer off, she'll continue with us here at ESPN. And she's back in women's pro hoop. And this is the biggest college football primer we'll have uh, this week. <laughs> she's got game. I know everybody's excited out there that I'm coming back. I, you know, everybody stopped what they're doing, and they're just focused on this right now. <laughs> now, do we know what team? Chicago Sky. Chicago Sky. So we've got Northern Illinois here right now, and I'm headed that way actually tomorrow to uh, meet my new coaching staff, Dave Cowens. And I'm real excited about it, guys, but we're not going to stop playing on the road. I'm telling you folks out there, Dave Pash has some game. He's got game. <laughs> well, when Trevor doesn't elbow me in the face, usually I can <laughs> we could make it from the outside. Well, I'm, I, I don't have basketball games, so I just play football. You go for the hoop, I slide in front and stick you in the chest. That's what I know. Of course, uh, Stacy referred to a former uh, standout at Stanford, Ken Belton, back in the uh, pack, pack eight days. And this ball is tipped at the line and almost picked off. David Thomas got a hand on it and knocked it to the turf, and it's third down. Well, congratulations, Stacy. It's good to have you back. Well, we'll, we'll play pickup basketball games against hot shots at the colleges where we're at. This is a quote from the November 11th issue of USA Today. Stacey's saying she tries to live in the here and now. Bottom line, she's just a jock. Well, and she, when she wants to be, she's quite a jock. She's got a lot of lady in her as well. But these hot shots that we'll play at gyms and pickup games, you know, they'll think, ah, she's just a girl, you know, and she schools every one of them. Isn't that every guy's dream, a lady who's a jock? They're down at eight. And Nicholson sacked again. Austin, the leading sacker on this team, along with Bernard Faithful, take down the quarterback, and Northern Illinois will have to punt it away. Well, he does a nice job here of holding on to the ball. Take a look at how this pocket collapses around him. He does a good job keeping his eyes downfield, but not only up the middle, but from behind where he's not looking. And that's a near miracle for a freshman to hang on to it. 
By the way, how about Belton getting his name mentioned twice in two weeks? Once in USA Today by Stacy, now by us up here. He is a legend. Did been around to punt it away. And a fair catch call at the 40-yard line by Steve Odom. Odom on the fair catch. So the Toledo will have Toledo. reasonably good field position when we return. Nicholson has been on the turf a lot lately for Northern Illinois. Oh, sorry, Mr. This is Dwight. My leg hurts. My face hurts. My arm hurts. My car is so smashed up. I will be contacting emergency services. Police. This is Dwight with OnStar. I'd like to report a vehicle crash with airbag deployment on West 106th Street. Would you like me to remain on the line? Yes, yes. I'm scared. Okay, you need to be scared. Is that the police arriving now, ma'am? Yeah, I think All right. Choose a vehicle that could help save your life. Choose a vehicle with OnStar. I knew he'd come in handy someday. I'm State Farm Agent Ephraim Sanchez, and this is a true story. I never knew that his good grades would save us money on car insurance. I never knew he could get good grades. He cheated. He had a tutor. When I found out about Mark's grades, I got him a good student discount. Dad, if you get me a car, we could get another discount. Mark's getting a car? That's so not fair. More drivers get more discounts from State Farm than anybody else. See what a State Farm agent could save you today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Jenkins, do you know where Jenkins sits? Sir, Jenkins doesn't actually work here. But he's around all the time. I, I saw him here this morning. Yeah, he's our uh, software supplier from Chicago. Sir? Here you go, Mr. Jenkins. See you back here for Thursday's meeting? I'll be here. Thank you. Now you can fly American for less than you think. I was going to give him a raise. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Keep up with Jenkins on AA.com. We're giving away a million advantage miles. You want Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. Bacon, mushrooms, and creamy, dreamy cheddar cheese sauce. All on a hot and juicy cheeseburger. Go now. Do Wendy's. Do what tastes right. Still getting dandruff? Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo helps eliminate dandruff starting after just one use. T-Gel Shampoo. It works. Neutrogena. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime, brought to you by OnStar by GM. To learn more, visit OnStar.com. And back in Toledo, where the Rockets lead the Huskies 14-7. Toledo wins. It goes to the MAC Championship game. Still has a game against Bowling Green next week. Toledo would have to win that game. If the Rockets lose tonight, it would need then Northern Illinois to lose next week to Western Michigan. Trinity Dawson, who had a 38-yard touchdown catch and run earlier, gets about 70 yards on the rush. A chick on the tackle. Well, Northern Illinois has never been to a MAC championship game and has only won at Toledo once. That was back in 1972. There have been a lot of droughts in Chicago. One of them was ended this year as the White Sox won the World Series. Will the Cubs be next? The Blackhawks, or will it be Northern Illinois? Northern Illinois has got a shot if they can win this game. Out on the flat is Hawkins. First time we've called his name. No game of the play. Ray Smith dragged him down. So that's the importance of this game for Northern Illinois. In three of the last four years, they have been co-champions of the MAC West Division. But they lost head-to-head -to, -head to Toledo, and therefore Toledo went to the MAC Championship game. And so if they can win out, starting with a win tonight, Northern Illinois can end that drought. DeKalb is about 40 minutes or so north of Chicago. Enrollment of over 24,000 people. They went to a bowl game last year, beat Troy in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. That was their first bowl win in 21 years. Toledo has yet to convert on third down, but is two for two on fourth down. Gradkowski finds Hawkins, but he can't hang on to it. Incomplete. Will Toledo and Tom go again on fourth down? Will they punt it away? Looks like they're going to boot it away. Talk about DeKalb. You know who else is from DeKalb? Cindy Crawford. I didn't know that one. You've been doing some research on that. Huh? And she went to Northwestern University in Chicago there and was a chemistry major. Top model is a chemistry major. Imagine that. More information on supermodels from Trevor Maddich later in the game as we have a fake punt. Northern Illinois not fooled. And the Huskies will take over. Richard Davis. They were the not fooled carrier. on the pitch to Davis. And Quince Holman came up with a play there on special teams. 
That is the third time Toledo has gone for it on fourth down in this game. And finally, Northern Illinois comes up with a stop. Well, Northern Illinois doesn't buy it at all. And they know about Amstutz's is, is a rep, reputation for taking these chances. So they weren't going to be fooled. They have an alert on every fourth down. And I think this call is a bad call. I mean, you don't live up to your reputation when you, you have a seven-point lead. You can pin them down in their own territory. The up man, Tremaine Smith, caught the ball and then pitched it ahead to Davis. And then Holman made the tackle. So Northern Illinois takes over at the Toledo 46-yard line. The Rockets got the go-ahead touchdown because of good field position. We'll see what NIU does here. That pass well short. Jared Carter, Nicholson's the pass intended receiver. For Jared Carter. Deion Jackson on the coverage. Tom Amstutz played back in the mid-70s at Toledo. Grew up in Toledo, then was an assistant coach. There was a three-year stretch where he went to Navy. Then the three bowls and his uh, four previous years as head coach and likely headed to another one this year. Just signed a two-year contract extension that will keep him at Toledo through at least 2009. He's had a lot of success here, and he's done pretty well in fourth downs, but I think this was a bad call. Even if Northern Illinois doesn't score, they get a field position advantage if they have to punt. Now, last time they did, they got it inside the 12-yard line. Here's a little slant play, and this time Hurd hangs onto it. Forward progress to about the 40, so that's going to be six yards. Mike Chamberlain on the tackle. Hurd. Even so, you can see what his thinking Mike may have been. If Toledo end. could have gotten that first down and scored a touchdown, go up by two scores. They want to get this freshman quarterback into a position where he has to throw as early as possible because that's where Toledo's defense so, can so really be effective. You, you like the call, man. I, I can see his reason. You like the call. I, I, I could, yes, I do. <laughs> I like to like to be aggressive, and they want to put Northern Illinois in that position. It didn't work. Nicholson almost had it intercepted. Nice play by Jason Flowers to step in front of Britt Davis and knock the pass down. Will Northern Illinois go for it on fourth down and six? Well, that was a good play by Davis. But you also have to get a little help from your receiver. He's got to come back to the ball a little bit. And Turner, I'm sorry, Britt Davis didn't do that. Didn't come all the way back for the ball. Minus one yard in this uh, first quarter after 122 yards in the first quarter. And North Illinois will punt it. Okay, here's the field position change we talked about, assuming that this punt gets stopped some, somewhere around the 10-yard line. Dip Bennett to boot it away, true freshman. Odom back at the 10. And that's going to get caught up in the wind. And Odom muffed it, but it went out of bounds, and Toledo will start inside the 20-yard line. Northern Illinois has not won at the glass bowl since 1972. Back in 2002, there was a great game, a close game between these two as Dan Sheldon had a touchdown. Toledo down 17 to nothing in the second quarter, came back to lead of the half. Then A.J. Harris gave them the lead. And then Dante Green, a 26-yard touchdown for Brian Jones at Toledo wins 33 to 30 with about 40 seconds left in the game. Toledo has won 11 straight in the series. The last loss at 89, as we mentioned, the last loss at home in the Glass Bowl back in 1972. That game back in 2002 that we just uh, showed you highlights from was in, in DeKalb at Northern Illinois. Well, this Northern Illinois defense is starting to settle in. And they're not doing a lot of complicated things, Trevor. They, they play a two deep here. They let their front guys play. The only change I've seen in their secondary is they drop into a four-deep coverage, but by and large, they're not blitzing and mixing things up. They're just playing straight up. You saw Tim McCarthy over on the bench getting looked at by the trainers. The starting middle linebacker, Richard Freshman, for Northern Illinois. Broussard flanking Gradkowski on second down. And Gradkowski oh. nearly throws a pick. Adriel Hansbrough couldn't come up with it. He was trying to hit more on the slant. And the pass was off the mark. It's third and ten. And that's Joe Novak's philosophy. Rather than give them a lot of things to have to think about, he'd rather them be rock solid on their assignments and let them be tougher than their opponent and win that way. Novak has done an amazing job of that program. They were awful when he got there. They had lost 23 straight at one point early in his tenure. Now, nowadays, with his record early in his career, he probably wouldn't be around right now. But he's done an amazing job. They've got 24 wins in the last three seasons. Still a couple games to go here, at least, in this year. Brad Kowski stepping up and fires on the money. 
caught for the first down by Moore. Nick Moore, the younger brother of Toledo all-time leading receiver, Lance Moore. That's a pretty good throw. He's throwing into the wind on the third down play. First four years, eight and 36. Yeah, eight and 36, first four seasons. You don't last, you know, today. You don't get four years to go eight and 36. You get two or three and you're out. Novak making the most, though, uh, of his tenure, now in his 10th year. First down for Toledo at the 30-yard line. Clinton Broussard on the carry. Stumbles forward to the 33. Our the English made the tackle on that play. You know, looking out at the field, looking at the wind, it seems to be Did swirling. The you know, the flag pulled, the flag blowed in one direction on one play, and then it changes. It, I don't know how Gradkowski is going to figure out <laughs> whether the wind is with him or not. Well, that's why he's got to throw a tight spiral, because aerodynamically, the wind will affect it less than if it's a little loose. Do you like how Gradkowski's dressed like the offensive line? Here's Gradkowski on the move. And the pass is dropped by Leplin. That ball has to be very... Third down and seven as uh, that pass was dropped. That ball's got to be very hard and cold down there. Let's check with uh, Stacy on the sideline. Dave, believe it or not, it's still freezing down here. And believe it or not, you guys are still nice and warm up there. The wind is swirling, Rod, back and forth every which way. It comes and it goes. There's a lot of debris floating around on the field. You'll notice a lot of the uh, the fans, what they bring to the game, their they're, uh, little toys, their bangers, they're all over the place here because of the wind, guys. Yeah, the thunder sticks uh, have been... Looks like an old veteran stadium where that trash just blows around inexplicably in the corners. That's what we've got here tonight. It makes it hard on an offensive coordinator in terms of calling your plays. Here we see the thunder, thunder sticks being blown around. You don't know if you're calling a pass play into the wind or not. So out of the shotgun on third and seven. Brad Kowski going for Odom, laid out but couldn't pull it in, incomplete. Odom has been heating up, had nine catches a week ago against Ohio in a win, and has been Bradkowski's favorite target here tonight, but couldn't connect there. That's two consecutive drops, and we talked earlier about the effect on the leather of the football of dry, cold weather. It makes the pores in the leather close up, and it's very, very slick, and we've seen two receivers now drop good passes. Karen to punt it away. Northern Illinois was coming, but couldn't get to it. Powers racing up at the 30-yard line. Oh, but he just gets pummeled at the 30-yard line by Jason Flowers. Seven-point lead for Toledo. Hard hitting on a cold night in Ohio. Okay, I'm going to get a hold of my emergency services. Sheriff's office. Hi, this is Edwina calling from Monster. I have a couple on night 70 and their husband is having a seizure. Ma'am, what happened? He put his foot on the gas and straightened his leg out. He was going like 85 miles an hour. All right, I'm sending the squad right now. Okay, honey. The squad's pulling up right now. Edwina, thank you very much. You're more than welcome, ma'am. Choose a vehicle that could help save your life. Choose a vehicle with OnStar. Hey, Mom. Sorry I haven't called for a while. You guys went and took that family portrait without me in it. What was that? For Christmas, I want the Verizon Wireless V276 by Motorola at Radio Shack. It's got a digital camera, speakerphone, and caller ID. So I'll know when it's you calling, and I'll definitely, probably answer. This holiday season, don't just get a gift. Get the Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at niubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Gansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Before the game, you can shop at either of our two locations, the Home Student Center or the Alumni Shop at the NIU Convocation Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop at home. niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. NFL Sunday Night Football on ESPN HD. Football like you've never seen it before. From bone-crushing tackles to fingertip catches, Comcast Digital Cable with high definition is the best way to experience the extremes of the NFL. 100-yard sprints to one-inch battles 
Don't miss any of it with the best seat in the house. Watch Sunday Night Football on ESPN HD. And the best way to get HD is through Comcast Digital Cable with high definition. Back in Toledo where the Rocket wide receivers are warming up their hands trying to catch a ball that is very cold and slick and they have dropped four passes so far in this game. Northern Illinois has dropped three. Gradkowski playing his final home game a senior out of Pittsburgh not getting a lot of help so far in this game but his team does lead as we have some movement along the line. Gradkowski has a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. Ball start. Number 16. The offense penalized five yards. Still first down. But the number's not great, and I'm sure Greg Kowski wants to leave a lasting impression in his final home game. Well, he's thrown the ball accurately. It's had too many of them dropped. Five out of 12, but very well be nine out of 12 because of those four drops. So after the penalty on the right tackle, John Brose, that is first down and 15. From the Husky 26. Running play. And Wolf is taken down at the 27. That was not a penalty flag. That was a thunder stick rolling into your picture. J.P. Bacasiak on the tackle. Now here's how you mess with a young quarterback. Take a look at the corner. Comes in here. Safety comes. Safety goes back. Corner comes back out. They're trying to disguise coverage so the pre-snap -snap look might confuse Nicholson. So gain of one at second and 14. Nicholson one out of six since a 10 for 10 start. But he's been getting pressured much more and sacked twice. From the shotgun here. They try to set up the screen with Wolf. Oh, and he gets drilled by Keon Jackson, a loss of about four. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. All right, guys, every week we honor the singular All-American Player of the Week. Right now, A.J. Hawk is leading the way, but it's not over yet. The polls, or should I say your singular wireless phone, can stay open for voting until midnight tonight. Just text the word VOTE to 87654 on your wireless phone. Access the nominees you see there. You could win a trip to the national championship game. Hawk's leading, not over. It's interesting, uh, Reese, Rod, and Travis, you look at those four names, none of those guys are in the, uh, the Heisman race. Of those four players that are potential player of the week as that pass is off target. Britt Davis couldn't hang on to it. Maybe on a warmer day that ball is caught. Instead it's incomplete and it's fourth down. I like the fact that in that vote you've got a defensive player leading for a change. You would like that. Yeah some uh, sophisticated fans out there. Fifth punt coming up already for Dittbenner. Odom is back at the 42. Toledo has won the field position battle so far in this game, and that is the difference right now. The one touchdown they got to go ahead was on a 38-yard little screen. A one-play drive after Northern Illinois had a punt out of its own end zone. Odom. In the Northern Illinois Territory, taken down to the 47 by Melvin Rice. Well, we are uh, closing in on the end of another regular season in college football. It is Heisman time. Right now, guys, who do you think the favorite is? Well, I think the favorite is Reggie Bush. I think he's had a phenomenal season, and he's made big plays in big games. I think that Matt Leinart has come on. Uh, I think certainly his play, his signature play, was that throw in the Notre Dame game. I think Bush has played better in big games for USC. I think Young is probably number two behind Bush right now. All right, we'll get to Trelves and Trev's thoughts after this play. As Brad Kowski is planted back at the 40-yard line. It was Ken West, the left defensive end, getting his first sack of the year and bringing down Brad Kowski for a big loss. Well, we talked about them starting to settle in and play better defense. They've kind of figured out the rollout. They got beat to death within the first quarter. Now they know when to expect it. All right, Trev, uh, right now, who do you think is the Heisman front runner? Well, I think, I think Vince Young at this point, and I think the Oklahoma State game would put him over the top because at halftime, Texas led, and Vince Young didn't spread the ball around to bring Texas back. He did it himself, starting with an 80-yard touchdown run. Anybody than those three guys that has a chance? No. Okay, shovel pass. 
And again, another big hit as Phil Brown levels Trinity Dawson. We're seeing some huge hits in this cold weather. Well, keep in mind, as you take a look at the numbers, Liner actually having a better year than he had last year, if you look at his numbers, and Bush certainly being outstanding. But the USC guys both have big games remaining a chance to impress the country and it's also possible that the usc guys could split the vote and young could get more votes and they certainly split the production they're so talented and vince young is clearly the key to texas there's third and 15 and gradkowski in trouble and tripped up at the 45 yard line by larry english about seven yards shy of the first down and so Toledo will punt the football. You know, we, we've talked about the drop passes. We've talked about the swirling wind. That's one of the reasons why a lot of coaches believe you have to be able to run the ball in November, particularly in the Midwest. Why a lot of coaches don't want to run the spread offense and throw the ball when you get to this time of the year, because you, your offense tends to go dormant with the weather. Kern booting it away. Powers letting it go. That was a horrible kick. See where they spotted out of bounds. Right around the uh, they spot it right around the 30 yard line or so. Take a look at the standings in the West Division of the American Conference. The Toledo win, and it will go to the MAC title game regardless of what happens next week. North Illinois needs to win its final two games. It plays Western Michigan on ESPN2 next week. In the Eastern Division, Bowling Green, if it beats Toledo, will represent the Eastern Division in the MAC title game. Beat Miami of Ohio last night, and Akron got a win over Ohio last night. You saw both those games on ESPN2. There's some weather that was in Clement in the Oxford area, and that forced a postponement of kickoff by about two and a half hours to that Miami game. And Bowling Green eventually to one. From the Northern Illinois 21, here comes a big hit, and the quarterback never saw it. Nicholson got hammered by Chamberlain, and the freshman had no idea it was coming. Well, that's a case of taking a little bit too long to get rid of the ball. It was a delayed blitz. Chamberlain came free, and Nicholson never saw him. He'll be coming right there. Never saw him, and he's holding the ball way too long. Oh. He got a face mask in his ear hole and did not fumble. That's two huge hits that he's taken without fumbling. You got a timeout call by Toledo. That's the third sack on Nicholson. You can see it coming. As soon as you saw Chamberlain come into the backfield, Nicholson was not paying attention. But uh, that is a freshman mistake. So one timeout remaining for Toledo, two for Northern Illinois. We had a lot of points early, but a defensive game since the midway point of the first quarter. Nicholson has been sacked three times, so this was the hardest hit he's taken from Mike Chamberlain. Look at that head snap. He gets hit from the side, and the head went all the way to one shoulder pad, all the way to the other shoulder pad. He still held onto the ball. He had a 76-yard drive to open the game, only 33 yards since, but Garrett Wolf might get that and more on this play. Very close to the first down. Nigel Morris on the play defensively for Toledo. As we check in with Reese, who's going to tell us what he has for us at the half. All right, Dave, on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, Robert Smith is alongside. The Eagles have plenty of issues. We'll chat with Pat Hill, whose team takes on USC this weekend, and South Carolina hit with probation. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about that improving USC defense. All right, we'll talk about that. And with Stacey Dell Schumann going back to the WNBA, I'm worried with all of that rust, she's not even going to be the best Stacey on her team with Stacey Lovelace Tolbert there. <laughs> Here's a pass play on third down. She heard you, Reese. Britt Davis caught that and picks up the first down, moved the chains for Northern Illinois. Maybe the WNBA should have an all Stacey team. Stacy, your guy Reese Davis is dogging you back in the studio. You know, Reese is all talk. Like, he sits behind that desk and he, and he just rambles. That's all he does. <laughs> and now he's jumping over to the men's side. He's leaving the women's side, guys, going to the men's. What, what's up with that, Reese? <laughs> <laughs> Reese is coming up along with former Ohio State running back Robert Smith as that pass is picked off by Keon Jackson, and he's still going. 
Jackson is tied for the all-time lead of the Mac in interceptions returned for touchdowns. He takes this one inside the 30. There's a penalty flag down on the play. Fourth pick of the year for Jackson. And a costly turnover this late in the half. A ball that never should have been thrown. Oh, but defensive holding on Toledo, or was it after the interception? If it was after the interception, it remains Toledo ball. After the interception, holding number 15 of the return team, penalized 10 yards, first down, Toledo. Well, take a look at Keon Jackson. He's underneath right now. He's in perfect position. No reason to throw that ball. You got two guys right there. Keon Jackson underneath uh, Powers there and no reason in the world for Nicholson to throw that ball. Defensive coordinator Tim Rose told us that it's important to mix up the coverages. That was one of the few times they put seven defenders back in the zone. Jackson banged up on that play though going to the locker room a little bit early. Gradkowski going to work and finds Washington on first down and he had it popped free and it's picked up by Ray Smith and Northern Illinois gets it right back. Ray Smith comes up with a fumble recovery as David Washington had it poked loose from behind. Well, that's making a play when you need to make it. Northern Illinois' defense takes away that momentum. It just comes out of his hand. It looks like he didn't quite have good, a good squeeze on the ball because there wasn't a direct hit on it that I could see. And away from that action, Gretkowski oh, takes a hit that knocks him down awkwardly. That's the second time that Holman has hammered him. One time up high, planting him to the turf, that time down low. Washington had forced out of his hands by Phil Brown, the true freshman for Northern Illinois. And the Huskies, after back-to-back -back turnovers, an interception by Nicholson, and then the fumble by Toledo, just happy to go into the locker room down seven. Remember what happens when it's dry and cold. It's look, he's got no sleeves on. It's bare skin, and that skin is cold and slick. The ball leather is cold and slick, and he wasn't able to keep that ball secure in his arm. And if Jackson is hurt and is unable to return for Toledo, that'd be a significant loss. He's their playmaker. He's accounted for seven turnovers by opponents this year. Another knee taken by Nicholson. And so it'll be a second. Border. Toledo with a win, clinches the Mac West and goes to the Mac Championship game. Northern Illinois needs to win its final two games to, the first half with a score. to get to its first ever MAC title game. And Tom Amstutz is standing by with Stacey Dale Schumann. Coach, uh, your players have dropped a few balls. How much of the factor is the weather? Well, it's a little windy out here, but uh, you know we're better than that. And, and I think we're going to uh, cling on to those in the second half, get some more points on the board. What's going to be your message to your players at the half? Well, we're just going to have to keep on playing one play at a time, start over 0-0 and get right back to work. And uh, we've got to make this a great night. Have you used your whistle yet? Uh, I will at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. And uh, Tom Amstutz, as we mentioned, an accomplished chef. Maybe he's got some hot food waiting for his players and coaches in the locker room. Seven-point lead for Toledo at halftime. Time to go to the studio and Reese Davis. Tom Amstutz better be careful using that whistle Welcome in that cold weather. Freezing cold. Get some hot coffee or hot chocolate for the second half. College football primetime presented by Nikon. 14-7 the score. At halftime, Toledo leading Northern Illinois. All of those points scored in the first quarter. Dave Pash back with Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddish, and Stacey Dale Schumann. And guys, a contrast in the two quarterbacks. Bruce Gradkowski, a senior, playing his final home game. And then Dan Nicholson, the redshirt freshman, making his first start for Northern Illinois. It was Nicholson who was the better quarterback, at least statistically, early. Well, I think both of them started out pretty hot, Trevor. Early on, he had the idea it was going to be a shootout. Nicholson was really hot that very first drive when they marched down and got a touchdown. He completed every pass on the drive. He was 5 of 5, got them into the end zone with the touchdown pass to match the score at 7 at that time. Gradkowski threw the ball well. 
but he didn't get any help from his receivers. Lots of drops. There were seven drop passes between both teams in the first half, and so neither team could run the ball in the first half, and the receivers were not holding onto the ball enough to allow the offenses to sustain long drives. And as you look at uh, Garrett Wolf, uh, and he had uh, 37 yards rushing and only 26 yards rushing as a team for Northern Illinois. And the wind chill still right around 15 degrees. We've had snow flurries off and on. Temperature 29 degrees. But Gradkowski, as we said, dressed like an offensive lineman. No gloves, no undershirt. And Toledo will kick it away. It'll be taken at the 10-yard line by Powers. And he's got some running room. All the way up to the 39-yard line. Excellent return. Lacey Dale Schumann had a chance to talk with the coaches at halftime. I did speak with uh, Coach Novak at the end of the half here, guys, and he basically told me they've got to run the ball better and they've got to protect. But on a night like tonight, as cold as it is, these guys still have to hydrate. But it's kind of hard to hydrate, Dave, when you're hydrating on ice. Everything's turning to ice. It's so cold out here. These players are drinking, well, chewing on ice, guys. <laughs> That's not, that's not right. There's nothing you can do. And a penalty flag down on the play. Prior to the snap, looked like some movement on the offensive line. I have some uh, coffee or hot chocolate or something. They have to take a pick and well, break over the top of that. Number 80. Offense penalized five yards. Still first down. That's the fifth penalty on Northern Illinois. And that's, that's really an issue. You know, you still get you burn stuff up but these guys got the right idea something warm yeah and something wet though the cold really saps the moisture out of your body play fake on first and 15 and Nicholson yeah. sacked for the fourth time Anthony Jordan comes up with a play this time the Mac West defensive player of the week five times this year gets his fourth sack of the season well, he's trying to wait for his man to come free down the middle, and that's what he's looking for, but Jordan comes in just when he wants to throw it. A big sack. And note his closing speed. He models himself after Ray Lewis and Joey Porter of the Ravens and the Steelers, and those are two guys that when they make a decision, they close on the ball. He's a guy that's on the radar of the NFL scouts, a senior from Whitehall, Ohio, at 6'2", 235, at very good speed, as Trevor said. Sam Hurd going down to make the catch at 30-yard line. Nicholson Got five yards three. back. Nicholson. Another third down and long coming up. Looking at the first half stats, we mentioned only 26 rushing yards for Northern Illinois and only 43. And a lot of drop passes, but a field position on one series, the difference in that half. When Toledo started at the Northern Illinois 38 and scored on the first play. Well, both of these teams love to run the football and have been very good at it, but not tonight. Nada. Yeah, a lot of those uh, negative rushing yards because of sacks. Minus 36 for Northern Illinois on four sacks. And a screen to Wolf. And he's got some blockers in front. And Wolf steps out of play as Keon Jackson forced him out of the 36 yard line. Keon Jackson runs They caught him in a blitz there. First down. Perfect call against a blitz. The big center, Brian Van Acker. All 6'4", 300 pounds. Look at him right here, number 65. Now he'll come out to this screen and take a look at him sprint. There he is on the right of the screen. Look how fast he's going. He finally gets a chip on his man, but that is some, some burst out of the big center. And a burst from Garrett Wolf, who again had a knee injury. That was a 35-yard game. He had missed the last three games, and we weren't sure whether we were going to see him tonight, but he started and been in there almost every play. Takes that one to about the 33 for three yards. So he hasn't shown the ability to cut, and that's been a big part of his game, you know, this season and last season, to change direction. But because of that knee that kept him out of three ball games, we've only seen him effective straight ahead. And he has ripped apart some pretty good defenses. He ran for 245 yards against Northwestern, not a great defense, but comparatively speaking, against the Max School, 190, 148 yards rushing against Michigan earlier this year. Wolf led the Mac with 1,656 yards after not really playing much the first few weeks. Pump fake. And Nicholson 
going across the field and a huge hit by Jackson, but Hurd hung out of the ball, and it's a first down to the 19-yard line. And that was good quarterback play. Hey, Nicholson had to wait for his receiver to come open. Watch how he holds. He's looking. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's watching him all the way come clear the first cover guy. And that was the second check down. He had Chateau Powers way over there on the left of the screen trying to run a double move, and he was covered on that double move, checked down, and did what you said, Rod. Great throw. Here's Wolf picking a hole and dragging a defender to the 12. Seven yards there. Anthony Jordan on the tackle. Guys, even though it's cold, we have seen some huge hits in this uh, rivalry game tonight. And it hurts more to get hit when it's cold like this because your body isn't as supple and it hurts more to hit the ground when it's cold like this because the ground is harder. See great rushing numbers on the season but not tonight you would think with the weather we would see more action on the ground. Wolf again hit in the backfield trying to back his way forward stop to the line of scrimmage. Seth Fidoff will get credited with the tackle there. And an injured Toledo player. We saw Keon Jackson go to the locker room at the end of the first half, but he's out there now. Nigel Morris is the injured Toledo player here. Well, Nigel Morris, uh, one of the reasons that Toledo will move their games to midweek games, he didn't get offered by anybody out of high school. Went to a very small high school as we look to see how he got hurt. Yeah, he just lays a big hit on Wolf and took the worst of that collision on his shoulder. Well, you but mentioned he, it's because it's cold. You can get hurt more, right? You can. But he went to a small high school in New York State, was overlooked even though he had a stellar career, and remembers watching Toledo on ESPN on a Thursday night and thought, you know, that might be a good place for me. He liked the atmosphere here. He sent him a tape, and that's how he showed up. How do you overlook a guy who had 31 high school interceptions? Pretty impressive. It's third and three. And they run Wolf, and he picks a hole. And Wolf dropped at the four-yard line, got eight on the play. Herbert with the tackle. Wolf showing excellent vision and patience. That was the first cutback we've seen from him. This is a zone. They'll take everything this way, and then watch him come back here. He finds the hole right there, all that on the cutback of that inside zone play. But I think the very fact that he can't do a lot of cutting helped him on that play. When he saw the hole, he made one cut and went right through it. Northern Illinois trying to tie the game on its opening drive of the second half. First and goal at the four. Remember, Hurd is about 6'4". This is his territory. It's been all Wolf on this drive. Bangs his way forward to the two. Herbert again on the tackle. Northern Illinois has had six straight years with a thousand yard rusher. The only school in college football to have more than that is Texas. Think about that for a second. This is Northern Illinois. And year in, year out, they have a thousand yard rusher. Man, the snow just came in quickly again. But it's so brutally cold that this snow is actually going up because it's so dry. Temperature around 30, wind chill around 15. Second and goal from the two. Nicholson on the rollout to the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Pat Raleigh. Both the tight ends, Nordine and Raleigh, with their first touchdowns of the season coming in this game tonight. And NIU can tie the game with the extra point. And what terrific patience. He could have put it, his head down and run it in. Instead, he keeps on with the play to allow the receivers to get open. Now, look, at this point, he could run. But instead, he extended it and allowed Raleigh to get to the corner. How about Nicholson on that drive after getting sacked four times, getting picked off at the end of the half, bouncing back with a touchdown drive, and the extra point by Nendick ties the game. Pat Raleigh with his first touchdown pass, first touchdown catch of the year, I should say, and Nicholson with two TD passes in this game. Hungry. One Big Ten title and two games. The winner of one of college football's biggest rivalries still has a shot at the title while Penn State's fate rests in its own hands against Michigan State. Michigan, Ohio State, or Joe Paz Nittany Lions. One will finish today as the Big Ten champion. You can see it on ABC and ESPN. 
Huge games in the Big Ten on Saturday. Pretty big game in the MAC tonight, Reese, between Toledo and Northern Illinois. If Toledo wins, it goes to the MAC title game. Northern Illinois has to win out for it to go. And Dan Nicholson, the wretched freshman quarterback, has led Northern Illinois down for scores on each of their opening drives tonight in the first half and then in the second half as the flurries continue to fly here. And snowing even harder now. Those uh, drives to open the game in the third quarter tell me that the scripting of plays, the coaching that they're getting, giving the youngster, has worked. And the challenge for Northern Illinois is to adjust to what Toledo does so that they can come back with another good drive. They've only had good drives to start each half. Well, Joe Novak had to replace Phil Horvath last week when he broke his forearm with Nicholson, and we talked with Novak over the weekend and he said hey we're still trying to find that quarterback that guy to lead our program and maybe he's found him in Nicholson as that punt or that kickoff gets uh, caught up in the wind it looked like a punt and Odom just muscles his way out to the 40 yard line on both of those scoring drives Nicholson was four out of four passing he's been sacked four times and picked off once but in his first career start all in all he's done pretty well well, you know, you, you look at quarterbacks. How, how do you find guys that work for you? you? You look across the way at Gretkowski. He was not highly recruited. They develop quarterbacks in the MAC. Guys who don't make it in the Big Ten or are ignored by the Big Ten, they come to the MAC and they become great quarterbacks. Here's Dawson on first down, squeaking through a hole. And in the Northern Illinois Territory to the 46-yard line, dragged down by Ray Smith. Gradkowski didn't have a single 1A offer besides Toledo. They went and saw him play Patrick. basketball live, and they saw the leadership, the spark. And, and what Tom Amstutz told us was that you, you can't get on film why this guy is such a great quarterback. You have to see him live to feel the spark of leadership. From the NIU 47. Dawson on the inside handoff into the secondary and spilled by Utchin after a game of 11. Well, as Rod mentioned, there have been some great quarterbacks in this conference. Byron Lefwich and Ben Roethlisberger. Charlie Fry is the only one of that group that's healthy right now. Well, but you look at those guys and you say, how could those guys have wound up in the MAC and not be in the Big Ten, the ACC? What happened? Well, these were guys who were considered not quite ready for prime time coming out of high school, and they developed while they were in the MAC. Roethlisberger, who's from nearby Finley, was actually a wide receiver most of his uh, high school career, and that's why a lot of schools didn't recruit him. Ended up at Miami of Ohio. You know, Ohio State wanted to move him to tight end, and he wanted to play quarterback. But that's one of the reasons MAC quarterbacks do so well in the NFL is that they get a chance to play earlier. Gradkowski, a three-year starter, Pennington three-year starter Roethlisberger very similar so they can develop their skills develop their talent over a greater time would you guys put them in that class and, and forget what these guys have done in the NFL but based on their college careers would you put Gradkowski in that class with Roethlisberger Leftwich, Pennington oh absolutely he's had a great college career regardless of what he does in the NFL that hole closed quickly Still positive yardage for Trinity Dawson. Blaylar going to tackle, and there's a penalty flag down. Gradkowski got hit pretty hard in the backfield. He has a late hit. But I think Gradkowski will have a shot in the NFL, specifically because he does what they need him to do. He can throw all the throws, as you see all these quarterbacks, guys that some have stronger arms. Roethlisberger had a gun. Pennington doesn't have a gun, but they can make all the throws you need in the NFL. But beyond that, He's got the ability to read a defense, manage a game, and make the right decision. And that's why he'll get a chance in the league. It's a personal foul on Northern Illinois. Um, he's a tough guy. He's been taking shots all night long. Here's one after the fact that the officials caught. Yeah, but Gretkowski, a little uh, yeah. forearm shiver. Gretkowski has taken a lot of hits in his career. He's played in big games. And they've won a lot here. So you look at a quarterback and how he performs and whether his team wins, this guy's done it all in college. He's already set to play in the Las Vegas Classic and the Hula Bowl. Back to Dawson. Trying to find a hole. Minimal gain of the play, tackled by Quince Holman. With more on Bruce Gradkowski, we bring in Stacy.
Well, you guys mentioned a lot of the great attributes about him, but really he's such a terrific learner of the game. He told me when he was a freshman, he couldn't catch on to the offense. He was redshirting. So he started to keep a diary. And ever since, guys, he's kept a log after every practice of all the plays, things that were important that day, and it's really helped him be the leader that he is for this team, Dave. And he's had a great career against Northern Illinois coming into tonight, completing better than 81% of his passes against NIU. He's right around 50%, though, tonight. Here is Dawson, and he is uh, thrown down by Blaylark at the 15-yard line, only a yard on that play. Leadership is the key word. That's what they saw in that basketball game. And Stacy mentioned that log from practice. That is part of what makes him a great leader. In practice, the receivers know they had better run routes perfectly at game speed as you look at his career against Northern Illinois. The offensive line in practice knows that they had better not let anybody near him, even though he won't get hit in practice. That's because they respect him as a leader and they play to his expectations. Big third down and eight here. They set up the screen and it's picked off. Dustin Unship with the quarterback to beat. But Gradkowski, like a typical Pittsburgh quarterback, runs down there after throwing the pick and saves a touchdown. And that is not supposed to happen. It's because Gradkowski makes the play that this isn't six points. This is one of the reasons he got the scholarship here because he's a gamer. They saw that with him on the basketball court. He's the kind of guy you pick. Most quarterbacks would have given up and would not make this play. But he saved his team seven points right there after a tremendous defensive play. Well, Phil Brown was right in his face, and that's what forced the ball to be thrown a little bit high, and that's why it was tipped up for the pick. What you see there is very typical of those uh, Pittsburgh high school quarterbacks. So first down for Northern Illinois. Outscoring Toledo 7-0 in this quarter. The redshirt freshman quarterback, perhaps outplaying the senior quarterback in this game. And there's the redshirt freshman Nicholson again, finding Sam Hurd for a gain of about five. Go back to this play, Olchik. This is a fantastic play. I mean, in this weather, to have those hands to catch that ball in that situation, that is a tremendous play. But what a great comeback by Gronkowski to get Utschik. First pick of the year for Utschik. And a running play to Wolf. Oh, stone to the line of scrimmage. Nothing there. Tyree Pollard, the nose man, on the tackle along with David Thomas. And all the pro scouts here at this game watching Gradkowski, it, it's not good to throw an interception, but they will be very impressed with his speed to run down a safety like he did. And just his determination to make the play downfield to keep North Illinois from scoring a touchdown. Uh, we've talked about the really good feat that Gradkowski has as a quarterback. You saw that athleticism use his feet there. And it may help his team keep North Illinois from getting some points if the Toledo's defense can stop him here. Because that would have been a touchdown if not for Gradkowski. And Nicholson forced out of the pocket. Going to dump it off. And it's going to be a first down despite the huge hit. Antonio Malone with a big hit on Powers. But it's going to be a first down for Northern Illinois. That would hurt me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Just listen to this one. And then a little foot to the face, incidentally, but a little insult there to injury. I didn't think corners were supposed to be able to hit that hard. Ah, uh, corners are tough, guys. How about Nicholson with a smart there to dump it off? The first down now at the 20. Play clock at three. Wolf straight ahead. And we're seeing a lot of tackles by the linebackers as Wolf is getting into the second line of the defense cleanly. That's about six or seven on that carry. Jordan on the tackle. Toledo's defense again trying to fool Nicholson. Now you've got what looks like it should be an overloaded box, but watch how they'll back out at the last second right there. And so it's a run. He says, look, you're trying to fool me. Forget it. We're going to run the ball because now you're in a two deep shell. Second down and three. Wolf, first down to the seven-yard line. 
And again, great patience and vision by Garrett Wolf. Well, that's been the adjustment from the first half to the second half. In the first half, they ran the zone downhill. They just tried to attack the gap. Second half, they're bending it back. They're cutting back the play away from the flow of the offensive line. Northern Illinois lost 11 straight to Toledo. Last win in 1989. Joe Novak is 0-8 against Toledo. They are 1-16 in the glass bowl. Haven't won here in 33 years. They're trying to take the lead here on first down and goal. There's a man in the back of the end zone, but it's dropped. Britt Davis had a touchdown, but he dropped it. And that was a well-designed play. They use Sam Hurd, the big tall receiver, as a decoy. He'll be in front of you. He's right there, and that brought the defense up to allow Davis to get behind him. He's right here, drawing guys up front. Davis gets behind him, and Davis has had trouble hanging on to the ball all night, whether lining up at quarterback or catching it as a receiver. Eight drop passes. Yeah, you mentioned Davis lining up as a quarterback. Fumbled it twice. Second and goal. And looks like we're going to have encroachment. I think there was contact by the Toledo defense. Patrick Clark, the nose tackle. You know, Dave, I, I'm really surprised that Northern Illinois has not taken a shot at throwing the ball to Hurd down here on a fade. 6'4", 200 pounds. Contact. Defense offside. Number 97. Penalized half the distance to the goal. Patrick Clark, as we mentioned, the guilty man. Now, Toledo does have taller corners. They're about six feet tall, but still uh, Sam Hurd 6'4". Well, Tim Rose told us yesterday he was quite worried about Hurd being able to just alley-oop over his guys because he can really get up. So second and goal from the three. Wolf trying to force his way into the end zone. May have gotten a push from a Toledo player. They've yet to signal. It's a touchdown. A touchdown for Northern Illinois. And the Huskies have the lead on the road. Hutchick's interception sets it up. And Trevor Wolf is only 177 pounds, but he can really pound 225 pounds. He lifts that thing 18 times. You see his strength and his leg drive. All that work in the weight room, little guy is pretty tough and strong. Yeah, there were two unblocked defenders in the hole that he beat. The extra point is good. Northern Illinois leads for the first time as we bring Stacy in. No, I, Dave, Dave, I talked with Sam Hurd uh, yesterday, and I asked him, what's the pressure like coming into this game to beat Toledo for the first time in since 1989? He said, we're tired of being bullies. Our coach said, we're not going to be bullied anymore. We're going to come on their doorstep and punch them in the face. They've punched them now, Dave. Yeah, they've scored 14 unanswered here in the third quarter. And they lead by seven. The EA Sports Maui Invitational begins Monday at 2.30 on ESPN2. Brought to you by the all-new 2006 Jeep Commander. The most capable seven-passenger 4x4. It's your world. Take command. The bobblehead doll for Bruce Gragkowski. Not really smiling in that picture. And probably not smiling on the bench right now because Toledo, which has won 17 straight at home, down seven in Northern Illinois. Gretkowski threw an interception the last time Toledo had the ball. It was a 50-yard interception return. Gretkowski made the tackle, but Northern Illinois eventually scored on a Garrett Wolf touchdown run. Here's Steve Odom on a kick return for Toledo. Can he get the corner? He does. And he's banged out of play at the 42-yard line. Stacy mentioned how Northern Illinois would not be bullied. You've got man coverage, man coverage, and nine Toledo defenders in the middle, but Northern Illinois runs it anyway. Talk about not being bullied. Nine in the box, no problem from Mighty Mouse. He takes on three guys right here and still gets into the end zone. Wolf Garrett doubles his Mighty Mouse. And your Mighty Mouse, Wolf Garrett, Garrett Wolf. Call yourself whatever you want to be. Missed three games with a knee injury. Came back uh, tonight. Weren't sure if we were going to see him, but he started. Has been there every play. Here's Gradkowski in the run. They had success with this in the first half, and we again see the speed of Gradkowski, but a big hit by Adriel Hansbro over by the sideline. Gradkowski did pick up the first down. 
Well, the reason they go to this is that the standard running game has been stopped. And so what do you do then? You get an extra guy when the quarterback runs the ball. There's an extra blocker. Now look at 12 Hasbro come in and hit him low, hard. Ouch on a cold day. I'm going to say that he did not get the first down. He was short, so second and one. Dawson gets the first down of the 45. It was a banner year for the Mac in 2004. Five teams went to bowl games. 11 players were drafted. The Mac really has only two bowl guarantees, the Motor City and the GMAC. There's been some talk about perhaps a postseason game in Toronto eventually against a Big East opponent. Rick Chris, the uh, commissioner for the Mac, really hustled last year to get three other Mac schools bids in bowl games. And Northern Illinois won its bowl game against Troy. Bouncing to the outside is Dawson. He's inside the 40-yard line to the 38. Got about seven there. Well, the problem with the Bulls is that Conference USA and the Mountain West really developed more good teams in depth and locked up a lot of the bowl bids before the MAC developed good teams in depth. And so now, as we look at the success that Toledo has had, now that the MAC has had more teams in depth, the bowl tie-ins are locked up. That's why they're looking to create extra bowls. They haven't won back-to-back -back MAC titles since 1969 through 71. A little bit shy of the marker is Trinity Dawson playing in his final home game as well tonight. You know, this quarterback on senior night has taken a lot of abuse. Only 14 points and almost that many hits. His last home game, Northern Illinois has treated him rudely. And they get it. Wind chill about 15 degrees on the field. Those hits don't feel good. Toledo just one out of nine on third down, coming in 47%. That's number one in the map. Kratkowski going deep, just off the fingertips. John Allen, who has not played a lot tonight, hurt his knee in practice before the Ohio game. They went deep to him there, but he couldn't pull it in. Well, this is the area that they expected to get deep on. They did it in the first half, deep down the middle, against a two-deep coverage. And Allen, who is a tight end, but really, a third wide receiver because he's only about 220 pounds has good speed good speed and, and just not quite enough to get under that ball needed a little bit more air to give him some space to run fourth time tonight Toledo's going for it on fourth down one of those was on a fake punt they did not get the fake punt they converted the other two in the first half and they're going to convert this one as Dawson lunges to the 33 punch it on the tackle well that fourth down made sense you're right there at the 35-yard line. If you miss it, so what? No big deal. You're in their territory. But the one in the first half, was it the very first quarter where they took one, I guess, second quarter, right around midfield that gave Northern Illinois an opportunity? Now that was on the fake yeah, punt that I, they didn't convert. I don't think that was a good one, but this one was a good call. Trev liked that one, though. I did like that one. Here's Dawson straight ahead. Not a lot of running room. Tim McCarthy with the tackle. The reason I liked it was the same reason I liked it when uh, the call was made, Northern Illinois made the call to try to go for two against Northwestern. When they were down by one, there were six seconds to go. They scored, a they scored a touchdown, and the defense was tired, so they went for two, and they didn't make it. But Tom Amstutz is making that same kind of a call for Toledo there where he thought he saw something on the field. How does that work with going for one on fourth and one in the second quarter? I'm not... Dawson spun around from behind and then drilled by about three Huskies. What do you got with that? The reason I think that makes sense is just because uh, he saw an opportunity to gain momentum and it didn't work. Tom Amstutz, as we mentioned, signed a contract extension this week that will keep him at Toledo through 2009. And we talked with his assistants, uh, Mike Devlin, a former NFL player and NFL assistant coach, and uh, Tim Rose, a defensive coordinator. These guys, they love working for Tom Amstutz, and not just because he feeds them once a week with his great cooking skills. They really enjoy working for Tom Amstutz. Part of that's because he wins. Here's Gradkowski on third down. And it looks like they're going to have the first as Steve Odom makes the play inside the 20-yard line. It'll be a first down. Let's bring in Stacey Dale Schumann for more on Tom Amstutz as a cook. 
like to call him Chef Amstutz, and that's what his fellow staff members like to call him because every week, once a week, he cooks outside of his office. For all of his staff members, he cooks them duck, pheasant, he fishes. This week they had a big fish fry and he made homemade curly fries for them, guys. It was perch. He caught over 200 on Monday, Dave. About four hours they were out there. Most coaches wouldn't give up four hours of uh, a film time, but it works for Amstutz. They still win. Despite all that time that uh, he spends hunting and fishing, grabs some of the GAs as Dawson takes that one inside the 15-yard line, tackled by Phil Brown. What some of the assistant coaches told us was that there ought to be more coaches who are like Amstutz, not just in cooking, but Tim Rose told us that he made sure that the guys who have kids went home for Halloween to be with their kids on trick-or-treat. And most coaches don't do that. They want you to burn that midnight oil. And some of the assistants who have gone on to uh, to better jobs, like Rob Spence, have had success at Clemson, now the offensive coordinator in his first year there. Dawson fighting for the first down, going to be pretty close. Hunch it grabbed him. It's hard to get a hold of guys, though, when your hands are freezing. We've seen a lot of guys slip tackles. And that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Toledo has not scored a point since the first quarter. And Northern Illinois scored 14 points in the third. Joe Novak has never beaten Toledo. 0-8. But his team leads by seven as we go to the fourth quarter with a Mac West title on the line. For the break, Toledo without. Northern Illinois outscoring Toledo 14 zip in the third. But Toledo is driving. Third down and one. This is the 12th play of a five minute drive. Final quarter at home for Trinity Dawson. And the senior muscling past the 10. Gonna be close. Ray Smith on the tackle. They had to get just past the 10 yard line. All depends on the spot right now. Now this is it right here. This is the fourth quarter. And 
if Toledo wins this game, it goes to the MAC title game, even though it has a game next week. Northern Illinois has to win tonight and then win next week against Western Michigan to go to the MAC championship game. Well, I think I'd give the ball back to Trinity Dawson if I were them. I think he's got all the karma. I mean, what's he got? Three sisters, Faith, Hope, and Charity. Trinity very involved in the community. I mean, that, that kind of karma is probably going to work for him down here. Well, they got a first down and goal at the nine. Looks like they're going to call a timeout to talk about what they want to run here. Two timeouts remaining for the Rockets. They're down seven, but they got a first down and goal at the nine. Is it Gradkowski time? Find out when we come back. Back in Toledo, let's get a weather update from 2006 WNBA All-Star Stacey Dale Schumann. <laughs> Dave, it isn't getting any warmer down here. I have about 16 of these every every pocket in my body, my hands, my my shoes. The temperatures actually dropped one degree, and it's now a 14 degree wind chill factor. So it's pretty cold. They're using heat generators on the sideline and trying to stay warm. All right, appreciate that report. To Stacy, if you didn't hear earlier, Stacy making a return to the WNBA after retiring. She'll play for Chicago next summer. Here's Gradkowski getting out of trouble. And pushed out of play by Alva Hansbro right around the line of scrimmage. There'll be a second down and goal from the nine. That white packet Stacy was holding up as a chemical heat generator. What you do is open the plastic wrapper, expose it to oxygen, rub it, and then it makes heat for about 20 minutes. And you put those in your pockets, put your fingers in there, and keeps them from being frostbitten. So we have an attorney in Rod Gilmore, we have a doctor in Trevor Maddox. So he plays one. And a meteorologist in myself. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even ask you guys what you think I am. Second and goal. On the draw, Dawson. Good cutback. Really and Dawson. drilled in the back at the five-yard line. That was a tremendous yeah, defensive play. And Dawson was on and his way Irving. to the corner. And Northern Illinois did a nice job of turning him back to the inside where you have more help, more teammates. Force it back to the inside. Utledge forces it back inside where he has help, and the play gets made. McCarthy uh, eventually on the tackle. Dawson coming off a career day, 167 yards uh, against Ohio. And a third down and goal from the five. If they don't get it, you would assume probably that they would go for it on fourth down. They've done it just about everywhere else on the field. Bradkowski looking for the fade, and it is broken up, nearly picked off. Washington, the intended receiver, and Alva Hansbro had excellent coverage. It's fourth down and goal. We'll see if Toledo goes for it a fifth time on fourth down. And a good job. The officials let them play here because they're both using their hands, fighting for position. No call, no pass interference. Good defensive play by Hansbro. Hansbro was terrific on that. He waited until he saw the receiver's head turn and then he turned and just in time for the ball and toledo is going to try a field goal this is the first time robbins has kicked tonight he's perfect 10 out of 10 on the year it's only a 22 yard field goal you guys surprised that they didn't go for it they've gone for it four times on fourth down so far in the game robbins, field goal robbins good. kick is good Northern Illinois leads now by four as Robbins remains perfect on the season. With more on him, we bring in Stacy. Well, Dave, he wasn't always perfect. Back in 2002, he was woeful at place kicking. And basically, the former offensive coordinator, Rob Spence, called him in for a meeting and said, hey, listen, I've got a book for you. The book is called Golf is Not a Game of Perfect. And the author is Bob Rotella. And basically, it's all about confidence and, and not having to be perfect at performing. He read the book, and ever since he's read that book, he's the best kicker in the history of Toledo kicking in football. And guys, he's read it every year at the start of the year because it's helped him so much and had such an impact on his career. And he's uh, now one of 20 semifinalists for the Lou Groza Award. You know what's crazy about that is that as a kicker, you'd better be perfect because whenever you're on the field, something very important is happening. But if you put pressure on yourself to be perfect, you won't perform very well. If you just relax and go with the flow, you're more likely to approach to be perfect. All right, that was a 16-play drive. You think Amstutz just thought, we've driven down here, we've had the ball for six and a half minutes, we've got to get some points instead of going forward and forward down? I would have thought that he would have gone for it. I mean, that's been his M.O., but he's got a good kicker on the sideline who at one point was not going to have a career here at Toledo, but that book saved him, and now they got three points in there. They're in this ballgame. 
throw has to back up, and he has trouble with it. Hit at the 12, and they wrap him up at the 14-yard line. Good coverage by Toledo. And in this kind of weather, you got to win the field position battle. And you know the other thing, you can't predict when the snow flurries will show up. They just came back again. There was a penalty flag thrown back at the 43-yard line. Might make him re-kick this. Yeah. Especially because you're starting at your 14 if you don't. Offside. Kicking team. Penalized five yards at the previous spot. Re-kick. Now note how he sounds like he's, you know, he's slurring his words. That's because it's so cold down there that the skin on the outside of your cheeks freeze and it makes it difficult to enunciate. That's how cold it is. Where do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> the coldest game I ever played was in New England and it was 30 below zero wind chill and everybody sounded like they were completely inebriated because their cheeks were frozen. I think those people have figured that out. That's why they're not moving. <laughs> Somebody poke you know, them with a stick and make sure they're okay. Look at that. I mean, you cover yourself up. I mean, you know, cold down there. <laughs> this is not Lambeau Field, and no, this is not January. This is November. They usually don't get this bad of weather this quickly. You might have a few nights like this, but uh, not usually this time of year do you have wind chills in the teens. And how about the difference here? A fair catch by Hansbro to 29. That's about a 15-yard difference because of the penalty. Last night down at Oxford, Ohio, there was a delay of about two and a half hours in the Miami of Ohio Bowling Green game because of inclement weather. But it was different kind of weather. It was rain. It was a little bit warmer. Here tonight, just flat out freezing. Well, there have been tornadoes touching down all through this area. Tornado watch had, a, had an effect on that delay. Meanwhile, here last night, it was about 60 until the wind got going. And then uh, this morning, it was chilly and windy. You got to give these fans credit, huh? You're sticking this thing out, out there? Play fake. And Nicholson's pass intended for her to complete. Take a look at our ESPN two game track. Well, early on, it was all about Greg Kowski. And he didn't get a lot of help from his receivers when he needed it. And Northern Illinois got back in the ball game behind Garrett Wolf. 118 yards rushing for a guy that we weren't sure was going to play today. Wolf with a knee injury. Missed the last three weeks, but has played just about every snap tonight. His quarterback, Richard Freshman, Dan Nicholson, is pretty good too. Here's Wolf. And again, we see the strength of Wolf muscling for an additional yard of the 35. He's only a buck 77. But you talked about his Trevor Maddich like bench press, and he gets about five yards on that play. And anybody who can sit under a bar that has 225 pounds on it and push it up 18 times in a row without stopping, hey, that's that's pretty strong. That's serious strength. He's 177 on a good day. wide receivers. Big third down here for Northern Illinois. Nicholson on the move. And he does complete the pass, but only a couple of the yards there as Powers makes the catch. And so Northern Illinois is going to have to punt. All right, Doctor, what's this for? <laughs> That's because they don't have any capes down there. There's no big ropes or anything. They've got to stay warm by moving, and that's intentional. Joe Novak uh, uh, on the other side is the same way, but Tom Amstutz for Toledo wants to make sure that those players stay warm by moving and keeping the blood flowing, not by cowering under a cape is and bundling Is up. that a natural thing, or are they coached that way? No, they, there's no capes down there. There's nothing to wear to keep them warm. No, I mean to jump, when they coach to jump. Did better gets it away. Here's Odom. Grabbed and thrown down. Tackle on special teams by McCarthy. So Toledo gets the ball back down four. Trying to thaw out the Gatorade bottles that are frozen here on a very cold night in Toledo. Illinois trying to stay warm with the capes on. 
over on the far sideline. Tom Amstutz, uh, the Toledo coach, got rid of the benches tonight, wanting his players to stay in the whole game and stay warm. See if Toledo gets Steve Odom involved. He only has one catch since the early part of the first quarter. He's their leading receiver coming into this game. A little screen pass that's dropped. That might be a fumble. That might, that's a live ball. That was a lateral. That was a lateral, a backwards pass. It was intended for Hawkins, and it looked like he stopped. He thought it was incomplete after he didn't catch it. That play set up like they were trying to set up a double pass, which is why you throw it backwards in the first place. Northern Illinois has the ball. Ray Smith came out of there with the ball. Well, the officials are trying to decide whether a Toledo player had it first. I think they're also trying to decide whether it was a forward or backwards pass, but that was definitely a lateral. Well, 26-yard line, and the ball is thrown back to the 23. That is a lateral, clearly. And they're giving Northern Illinois the ball. We do have replay here tonight. Although from where Brad Kowski threw it with that angle, it's pretty close. It would have to be obviously conclusive for it to be overruled. It looked very close, though, from that shot we just had, whether it was straight down the line or behind the line from where he threw the ball. Well, from my angle, it looked like he was back a yard from the 26, 25, 24, and threw it back to the 23. I think we're going to have a, a review here coming from the booth. We saw Joe Novak making a sign as if he could throw a flag. There's, he's at the 24, and that ball goes back to the 23. Yeah, that angle is better in terms of favoring Northern Illinois, so it's going to get upheld. The ruling on the field will be upheld. Right arm, right arm, right about the 24. And where does that ball wind up? It winds up back here at the 23. That's a backward pass. What a huge turnover here in the fourth quarter. Northern Illinois, which has not won here since 1972 has lost 11 straight overall in the series. Joe Novak's never beaten this team, and they're gonna get the ball at the 21-yard line, leading by four. Can't, can't we just get on with this? Yeah, those players down there right now are getting let's, awfully stiff. Let, let's get on with it. We, we got the answer, let's go. Well, they wanna make sure. Well, gonna... just, just let me do it, okay? If we're gonna have replay, let me do it. <laughs> After that, we can tackle world peace. We'll leave that to Condoleezza Rice. There we go. Well, both Stanford grads, or Stanford Associated. Take another look from upstairs at this. And see, I think they were trying to set up a double pass. But he look, look at him right there. 24, roll it. Back there, 23. Right, I agree. There is no way in the world this should be taking this much time. No way in the world this should be taking this much time. But they've been sipping on hot chocolate and coffee all night up here in the warm press box, so it's not as if they're slow because of the cold. Now, this is not good for the players. I mean, you know, you're just standing around there while you have this thing reviewed. Now, keep in mind what's at stake here. The winner of this game controls their destiny to win the MAC West and go to the MAC Championship game. If Toledo wins, automatically, no matter what happens next week, they're the MAC West champion. If Northern Illinois wins, then they've got to win next week at Western Michigan, and they go to the championship. Following review, video confirms the call on the field. It was a backward pass recovered by Northern, first and 10, Northern. And note how he slurs his words, as the cold <laughs> cheeks. I think, he, I think you forgot that it was Illinois, he just said Northern. He just didn't want to say the rest. His cheeks were frozen. So 42 out of the 57 calls in this league have been upheld. And Tom Amstutz's defense has to come up big here. Toledo only has three points since the first quarter. So if Northern Illinois should get a touchdown. It's going to be a tall task to come back from 11 down here with only 11 minutes to go as Wolf takes it to the 15 for about six yards. Well, Stacy Dale Schumann has done a great job. Not only is she a professional basketball player and a sideline reporter, but an excellent weather person. Stace, what's the latest? <laughs> yes, I am, Dave. And I, I want you guys to meet a friend of mine. His name is Diesel. And it's so cold down here that even Diesel, a husky, a beautiful husky, has to wear a coat. He's got an ESPN HD coat on him, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Trevor's coat. Here's second and four. Wolf. Bounces off 
a couple of tacklers going to be close. Oh, Anthony oh, yeah, Jordan, yeah. the first to hit him. Well, you talk about her down there with Diesel. You know the band Three Dog Night. I always wonder what that Stop meant. And that's when the night is so cold that you bring three of your sled dogs in to sleep with you for shared warmth. A one dog night's cold, a two dog night's really cold, but a three dog night, that's the worst. And information on Cindy Crawford, medical advice, and now this. <laughs> one day I'll learn football. <laughs> Woo, okay, I'm set now. Both uh, the running backs have done a good job, especially here in the second half, as neither team was able to run the ball in the first half. It is a first down for Northern Illinois. <laughs> Don't stop the three dog night. You can break down Ludacris and Kanye West and give us some more. <laughs> I'm still stuck on crisscross. Wolf trying to find a hole. Squirts through it, gets to the nine a couple of yards on that play. Wolf the ball. Chamberlain the tackle. Toledo has two timeouts remaining. Having used his timeout the last time it had the ball down on the five yard line. Think Joe Novak wants to win this game. He's never beaten this team. They won a bowl game a year ago. Trying to get bowl eligible tonight. <laughs> 0-8, lifetime against Toledo. What was he uh, in high school the last time Northern Illinois knocked off uh, Toledo here? Tom Amstutz was a senior in high school the last time Toledo lost as Powers was trying to stretch out and hit the pylon but went out of bounds. Going to be close to the first down. Well, something hit the pylon. The pylon is in the end zone. Yeah. So if that ball hits the pylon, watch his knee now, right knee. I think he was out first, though. Yeah, they were saying his knee was down before he got there. Yep. Because if your knee is not down or you don't step out of pounds, if you hit that pylon with the ball, it's a touchdown. I've never liked that play. Never liked that call. I've always felt like you had to get some of your body into the end zone instead of just stretching the ball across. It Pretty hit close. the pylon, but his knee was down just immediately beforehand. It They're going to review this. They're going to review yeah. it. And that's what they'll be looking at. Was his knee on the ground before? You, you want me to get this one? Now, he was coming from the side, so if the ball crosses the plane, even before it hits the pylon, it's a touchdown. And it may have crossed the plane right there before he hit the pylon and before his knee hit the ground, and then it would be a touchdown. That's what they'll look at is that timing. Was the ball across the plane of the goal line even before the knee went down and before the ball hit the pylon? But you can't tell from that angle. That's a good look. It looks like he's down. And from that one, certainly it's not conclusive. And that's the best look we have. It looks like he didn't quite make it. I think they'll uphold the call. Either way, it's a first down and four downs to get in for Northern Illinois from the one. And that's awfully close. Awfully close. That looks like the ball is on the goal line and looks like he's not quite out of bounds. Very close, but if it's not conclusive, they will uphold the ruling of the field. Looked like he was down. Looked like it did not get across. Now, one thing's for sure with this taking it as long as it is, as it is again for the second time, in just a few minutes, we're going to have 22 popsicles lined up against each other down there. We got some time here while they're under review. You, you got any more uh, advice, medical advice, or tips on Cindy Crawford or music? <laughs> well, are we waiting? No, I just know that DeKalb uh, barbed wire was invented in DeKalb, Illinois. I know that. The local high school is called the Barbs, and that's all I know. I was actually kidding, but it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I take it back. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one more time. Can you tell? Is this conclusive for you? Does he get in? Ball does break the plane there. But the knee was already down and the body was out of bounds, already touching out of bounds before the ball crossed. That's, that's, a, that's a hard angle to see whether or exactly when the knee touched the ground. I, I just don't think they have enough, as you said, Dave, to, to change the call. Either way, even if they don't get it, 
probably going to score here. They got four downs to get about an inch. You know, they, they've got to have some sensitivity to what's going on with these players on the field, though. They're just standing there freezing. Now they want to get the call right, though. Well, get the call right, but we, you know, don't take too long to do it. Not now. That was five minutes and 50 Following seconds. Following review, video confirms the call on the field. The runner was down, short of the goal line. It's first and goal, Northern, at the half yard line. All right, so Toledo's going to have four downs to get in, or make the Northern Illinois going to have four downs to get in. And if it scores, Toledo's going to be down 11. Joe Novak thought it was a touchdown. The first down and goal from the one. The redshirt freshman, Nicholson, the quarterback. And they're going to say that he did not get in. So it'll be second down. And what this does actually, probably in a way, hurts Toledo because it takes time off the clock. They're going to need two scores. Well, they have plenty of time for two scores. The first one, they just have to get quicker. They'll have plenty of time. Still, those are precious seconds, and you only have two timeouts. But you know, you got to keep playing. You got to keep playing for a turnover. You never know what will happen. Nicholson fighting again. No signal yet. Well, now it is a signal, and it's a touchdown. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. There is a penalty flag down on the play, though. That flag came in after the signal for the touchdown as if there were some extracurricular activity. Yeah, we've had a lot of that tonight. But that was not thrown before the touchdown signal. It came clearly after the signal for the touchdown. How about this, guys? Last year, Northern Illinois ranked 22nd. It thinks it's going to its first ever MAC title game. Toledo goes in, beats Joe Novak's team, and it's the Rockets that end up winning the MAC championship. This year, Northern Illinois down 14 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. As you see the personal foul call on Northern Illinois, but was it after the touchdown? Yeah, I, I clearly believe that the flag was thrown after the touchdown. Might be offsetting. He may have gotten Toledo as well. The saying though, if Northern Illinois can, this would be one of the biggest wins in the history of their program if they can Here's win this game here tonight. And they've beaten teams like Maryland and Iowa State. And those are certainly big non-conference games. They've never been in the MAC championship game. Touchdown on in the play. Following the score, dead ball personal foul, number 79 of the offensive team. That foul will be enforced on the kickoff. Player number 79 is ejected. Oh, that's uh, Ben Lewick, their outstanding second team all back left guard. He's in his sixth year. He's the most veteran player on that offense. And they might need him. Try to run the ball, take time off the clock, or you're losing one of your best, if not your best, offensive linemen. Well, it had to be pretty egregious behavior down there in the end zone to get the personal foul and to get ejected from the game. Normally, that is a fighting situation. They didn't call it fighting. They just ejected it. If you're fighting, you'll wind up having to sit out part of the next game. But something happened in the pile that they didn't like that was so far beyond the bounds that they felt they needed to eject it. About a minute has gone off the clock in the last 25 minutes of real time. With all the stoppages, a couple of instant replays, and now as they try to sort out if it indeed was Lewick who was ejected and if it was for fighting. Northern Illinois, if it wins tonight and beats Western Michigan next week on ESPN2, will win the MAC West and go to the MAC title game. If Toledo ends up losing this game and beats Bowling Green next week and Northern Illinois loses to Western Michigan, then Toledo would represent the Western Division in the MAC title game. Then Nick's extra point is good. A two-possession game. Northern Illinois with half of its 28 points coming off of Toledo turnovers. ESPN2's College Football Primetime.
is presented by the Nikon D50 Digital SLR. Incredible pictures made incredibly easy. And in part by Subaru, a world leader in all-wheel drive technology. Think, feel, drive, Subaru. Northern Illinois starting left guard Ben Lewick has been ejected. And here is the shot of Lewick in the melee. Just watch the shadow. You see the arm come up and go down. That's a punch. That's what the officials saw. And Lewick was on the sidelines talking to his teammates, indicating that guys were trying to break his fingers, bend, the, bend his hand back. Yeah, he's lobbying the officials there. You know, they can't see the fingers being bent underneath. All they can see is that arm flash as the retaliation. What's the worst thing, Trevor, as an offensive lineman you did in that pile to somebody else? You know, I didn't do bad things to other people. But underneath there, a lot of bad things happen because it's such a vicious place, especially down on the goal line. The mindset is, is as brutal and single-minded as there exists in the game of football. You never punched anybody back? Uh, no, I did get ejected from one game, but it was sort of a mutual thing. They threw us both out, but it was his fault. It wasn't my fault. But you didn't punch? No. I was disciplined. Short kick, Broussard at the 16-yard line. Excellent return. Broussard beats the kicker. There's a penalty flag down. Another flag down as Broussard is tackled at the 27. Two penalty flags on the play. Maybe that's the spark Toledo needs. It's been outscored in the second half by Northern Illinois, 21 to three. So maybe both flags were for holding on Toledo, which would wipe out that beautiful return. We got him for a block in the back and a hold. There are multiple fouls on the play. Illegal block in the back on the return team. That penalty is declined. Holding during the return against the return team. That penalty is in force, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Still good field position for Toledo starting at the 40, but not like it would have been inside the 30 of Northern Illinois. Well, Broussard takes off from what looks to be a great return. Looking for the hole there, couldn't see it, was behind him apparently. You saw the flag come in after Broussard was 10 yards beyond the spot. Radkowski, the senior quarterback, unloads and has a man at midfield. It's Steve Odom on the catch. And a gain about nine yards on the play. Sports Center follows us. Stuart Scott and Steve Levy going to get caught up on all today's news and highlights. Why Duke is number one and was hammering Seton Hall earlier, plus Kentucky all access. And AI with a big night. At 11, another wicked sports center coming up. It all depends on how long we go here. On second and one, Dawson with a first down and four. Cut down inside the 40 by Upshick at about the 37. So in two plays, they're almost to where the kickoff return went before the penalty. Well, I like the hurry up offense, but they're not panicking. They are running from the line of scrimmage, but they're not throwing the ball over the place, running it, mixing things up. From the Northern Illinois, 37. Brad Kowski with a ton of time going to Odom over the middle again. To the 28-yard line for nine yards. Big game in the back tonight. Huge game of the Big Ten on Saturday. College football presented by Nokia on ESPN Saturday at 4 Eastern. Penn State, if it beats Michigan State, will go to its first ever BCS bowl game. What a year for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions, regardless of that outcome. Second and one, Dawson. Spun down to the 24 after he got the first down. Ray Smith with the tackle. 
think there's any chance Michigan State wins that game, guys, on Saturday? Uh, of course it is. I mean, it's a big game. Rivalry weekend coming up. But I, I like the way Penn State has been playing smart. Not a lot of penalties. Not a lot of turnovers. If they keep that up, I think they win Saturday. Yeah, and quarterback Michael Robinson has really developed as a passer as the season has gone on. Kowski with time again, and the pocket breaks down. Kowski just throwing it up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Picked off in the end zone. Dustin Utchick with his second interception tonight. Not a play you normally see from a senior quarterback. Yeah, really uncharacteristic and not a smart play, particularly on a first down situation. Plenty of time to make something happen. He panics, and he just throws this up for grabs. Well, Nick Moore, number 82, is under there. And what Radkowski was hoping was that Moore could make the leap, like his brother Lance used to do, and come down with it. But he wasn't quite in the right position, and the ball sailed over his head. That was Utschick getting his second kick of the night. Radkowski really struggling tonight, especially here in the second half, in his final home game. He's had a tremendous career, but not a good night. Meanwhile, redshirt freshman quarterback Dan Nicholson in his first ever start has had a great night for Northern Illinois. Garrett Wolf has played pretty well, too. Gets pasted here by Anthony Jordan after a gain of three. And this is where Garrett Wolf is very important. Imagine if they're in this position without Wolf late in the game when you need rushing yards. Well, Wolf has been better in the second half than he was in the first half. I think he gained confidence as the game went along. Second half, we've seen him cut to his left, cut to his right. We didn't see that in the first half. He just ran straight ahead. He seems to gain more confidence on that knee that kept him out for three games. Wolf breaks one tackle, and it takes three or four Rockets to get him down, and Wolf's pretty close to the first down marker. And again, the strength of this 177-pound back is so impressive. Well, the guy whose tackle he ran through was David Thomas, who was one of the best tacklers in the MAC, an outstanding linebacker. He was unblocked in the hole, and Wolf ran right through his tackle. Big third down for the Toledo defense. They need a stop in order to get the ball back. Time is running out on that clock. Northern Illinois has been pretty good on third down tonight, six out of 12. Third down at about a half a yard. Oh, a little bobble of the snap, and Wolf mid at the line, but again shows that terrific strength for a, for a small back. He gets the first down. He got drilled by Chamberlain at the point of attack, and is a little slow to get up after taking that shot, but he did get the first down. 5'7", 174. Where he's got strength, though, you've talked about his bench press, which is amazing, but it's in his hips that allows that kind of a thing to happen. He gets hit up high, but the hip strength means that his base doesn't get thrown off and he's able to continue to drive. I think he's just a tough guy from Chicago. Having a great night in what could be a monumental win for Northern Illinois. Yeah, Wolf didn't get much there. Maybe even lost a yard. Well, we talk about David the way Thomas Wolf has played, but isn't it ironic that the redshirt freshman quarterback for Northern Illinois has played so great tonight, and the veteran, the senior for Toledo, Gradkowski, has struggled, particularly in the second half. Yeah, that's what's so surprising. Senior quarterback is going to be an NFL draft pick. Meanwhile, Nicholson taking over for the injured Phil Horvath, who broke his arm last week. This is Nicholson's first ever start. He'd only had 14 snaps prior to having to go into the game last week. Look at the numbers, two touchdowns, he's got a rushing touchdown. He's only a nine incompletion. And they're taking time off the clock, Toledo with two timeouts remaining. Wolf again popped hard at the 36, but he got five and another key third down coming up. And Toledo's gonna call one of its final two timeouts. Well, this is how you win football games. You have to be able to develop a pass rush in the fourth quarter, and you have to be able to run the football. And Garrett Wolf, he's been running the football for Northern Illinois in the fourth quarter. To the Capital One M Games. Time now for your chance to win one of 100 Phillips HD TVs with DirecTV service for a year. Log on to 100yardblitz.com to enter. The code word is Huskies. 
tonight's code word is Huskies. Enter it at 100yardblitz.com for your chance to win at HD TV. And Diesel going to have all the dog bones he desires if North Illinois hangs on to win this game. And if it wins this one and wins next week against Western Michigan, North Illinois would go to the MAC championship game for the first time and would pretty much wrap up a bowl berth. Toledo, if it loses tonight, we have to beat Bowling Green next week and have Northern Illinois lose to go back to the MAC title game. Garrett Wolf, who has 71 yards in the second half, might get 70 on this play. Wolf inside the 10, touchdown, Garrett Wolf. Into the end zone for a touchdown. A 64 yard touchdown jaunt by Northern Illinois' MVP, Garrett Wolf. Well, the road to a MAC championship runs through Toledo. And right now, Garrett Wolf is running through Toledo. 64 yards, pure speed to the outside, not looking like a guy who's missed three weeks with a bad knee. Well, he's gotten stronger as this game has gone on. I think part of it is getting the timing back and what it's like to be hit and bounce off of those hits. And that may have been the backbreaker as Nick kicks it through. It is an 18-point lead with four minutes and 20 seconds left, and Toledo only has one timeout. North Illinois has not won here since 1972, trying to be like the White Sox and end a long drought when the Sox won the World Series this year. Well, Trevor, you and Stacy talked about it at the very beginning of the ball game. Northern Illinois had so much to overcome. A young quarterback, a banged-up star running back, and bad weather on the road facing a veteran team that's dominated the MAC. And here they are taking charge and if northern holds on to win this game all they have to do is beat western michigan and they will go to the mac championship game now western michigan has going to have a lot to say about that but this hurdle they had to overcome before they can get to that last great test next week sports center coming up next and you can imagine more highlights from garrett wolf what a night for him and what a night for the redshirt freshman quarterback all Nicholson did there was hand off, but in the first half, he was huge. Toledo with a third longest current home winning streak in the country. They have not lost here in three years. Miami of Ohio, the last team to beat them here. And remember, they have not lost to Northern Illinois, period, whether in DeKalb or here, since 1989. And again, North Illinois without its top pass rusher, Craig Rush. They weren't sure about Garrett Wolf, whether he would even play tonight, but doesn't look like he's showing any ill effects of that knee. Short kick taken to the 35. And a pretty good return out close to midfield. Antonio Malone taking the short kick and bringing it close to midfield. So that helps Toledo a little bit here. You know, and we've hardly mentioned that A.J. Harris, another top running back from Northern Illinois, hasn't played tonight with a bad shoulder. They came in really banged up to this ball game, and look, They've put 35 points on the board. And it's Br uh, Bruce Gretkowski night. It's his final home game. Senior night. Toledo trying to wrap up another Mac West title. But not to be right now. Gretkowski trying to do something about that taking off. To about the 32, picked up 18. Utchick on the tackle. Rockets have to hurry. Only one timeout remaining, and they're down 18. Hutchick has 11 tackles and two interceptions tonight for Northern Illinois. He's really stepped up, leading tackler on the year for NIU. And this is a Toledo team that was close to being ranked this year, but for a last-minute loss. Gradkowski, too high, intended for Hopkins incomplete. And Toledo coming into this game 7-2. They lost to Central Michigan because they could not complete a pass in the end zone on the final play. Their only other loss was to Fresno. They got blown out in that game, but Gradkowski was hurt. Did not play in that game. That young man has had a stellar collegiate career. This is his final game. Cold night. Trying to bring his team back. Not a lot of time left. Gradkowski with time. Pass a little bit behind Nick Moore and complete. Now remember, even if Toledo doesn't make it to the MAC title game, because of its reputation, and you look at the fact that they're going to be some other conferences that don't get all their schools into bowls, two bowl guarantees for the MAC. There were five MAC teams that went to bowl games last year. You would think, and even if they're two, Toledo might 
go instead of the team that represents the Western Division. Well, that's possible because the Motor City Bowl and GMAC Bowl get to choose who they want from the MAC. All right, it's not necessarily those teams that make it to the MAC title game. Gradkowski hit as he completes it, first down to Hawkins inside the 20-yard line. Now we'll stop the clock to move the chains. The bowl times. Both games on ESPN. GMAC Bowl on December 21st and the Motor City Bowl at Ford Field on December 26th against the Big Ten School. And again, some conferences will not have enough eligible teams to fill all those slots. There's Hopkins again to the 11-yard line. Well, they have to get the ball into the end zone. They're eating up way too much time. They need three scores. They haven't picked up the first one yet. They've got to throw it to the end zone and get a score. Or, heck, kick the field goal and then do an onside kick. You need three scores. Yep, and you need a field goal, even if you get those uh, two two-point conversions after touchdowns. Here they try to an all huge hits as Moore is unable to hang out of the ball. Ray Smith just clobbered Moore. And that's a bad one. I mean, that that's putting your receiver in a bad spot. Gradkowski was trying to stick it in there and throwing over the middle. And he led his guy right into a lot of trouble. Look at that. And threw the ball out and up. Well, that was a stick. This ball really needed to be down and inside so that he'd have a chance to catch it while he goes underneath the brunt of that tackle. You know, quite honestly, I, I just don't know why you run routes like that particularly down around the end zone. Well, you're gonna get some zone coverage, you're gonna get guys hit like that. You know, that was reminiscent of Daryl Stingley with the New England Patriots and Oakland Raiders several years ago. At least uh, he's moving his hands yeah. and his arms there, but... Uh... But it's that same kind of route, that slant route across the middle into the teeth of a zone coverage and that's a dangerous route. And he's not moving his legs now, but he did move them earlier. Well, that's why the, the trainer's hands there are over his over his ear holes on the side of his head. He wants to make sure that he doesn't, doesn't move his head. They are very careful about being the most uh, precautionary as possible in this scenario. They don't have to think that there's an injury there. They just want to make positively sure. And so this may or may not be a bad sign. You know, a lot of teams would not run that kind of route. Okay, you see you the see hand moving around. There, yeah. Yeah. Well, look at his legs now. Yeah, there's there some we leg go. Movement. Yeah. See his legs move. And that's a good thing. Well, you know, guys, we were talking about what's at stake here. And if you know, Toledo loses, North Illinois beats next week. And we'll talk about that when we come back. Nick Moore down on the field. Honey. They're still tending to Nick Moore, the younger brother of all-time leading receiver at Toledo, Lance Moore. Nick got hit by two Northern Illinois players as he was coming across the middle on a slant route. And we've seen the arms move. We've seen his left leg move, not the right leg. We were mentioning, though, going to break, guys. Uh, well, first, I want to ask you about this, because we have had so many stoppages in the last eight minutes. I mean, the last eight minutes of game time have been about an hour in real time. We've seen a lot of big plays during this time. Now, when you look at him remove the face mask, once again, don't think that that necessarily means anything. Because they don't know, they will proceed as if it's a worst case scenario even though it probably isn't so when you see that happen it's not a diagnosis on their part of a neck injury all that means is they're going to be careful sports center coming up next uh, how much do you think the stoppages have affected the way the game has gone here we've seen Gretkowski make a mistake we've seen a big run by Garrett Wolf well I, I think anytime you have weather that is this cold it has an effect on players I mean it, standing around is not good for you and we've seen a lot of stoppages replays that took five six minutes a lot of penalties. You know, the college game is getting way too long. The game's got to be shorter. Got to find a way to speed it up. 
Well, one way is don't stop the clock to move the chains on first down. If they did that only, it shortened the game. Let's take a look one more time at uh, the vicious hit here by Ray Smith on Nick Moore. I, I don't fault Ray Smith for this. This is a good football play. That's, that's what he should be doing. What I do fault is I don't think you ought to be running plays like that. Those are dangerous plays to, ah. to run for your, your players. Well, Gradkowski read man coverage, and Smith came in on zone, and that's where it was the most dangerous. We were mentioning before the break that if Toledo loses tonight and Northern Illinois wins next week, that Northern Illinois would represent the Western Division in the MAC title game. But if Northern Illinois should lose and Toledo lose, that means Western Michigan would go to the MAC championship game. And that's one of the best turnarounds in college football this year. Western Michigan was 1 and 10 last year and 0 and 8 in the MAC. And they're 7 and 3 this year and uh, right now tied for second place in their division. We're going to take another break as they continue to work on Nick Moore at the five-yard line. Back in a moment. With Nick Moore and his family as they uh, try to lift Nick Moore onto a cart and get him to the hospital, we have seen movement in both arms and the left leg uh, so far, which uh, is a good sign, but... Uh, Obviously, we're not going to speculate on what's going on with Nick Moore, but let's take one more look here just in case you're just joining us just to see how vicious this hit was. But there he is. Race miss faulty. Yeah, you'll see him coming in here, and he runs right into two defenders in perfect position. Ray Smith with the bigger of the two hits, and Hansborough was also there. Good football play, good defensive play, clean, nothing dirty about it. That's just, in my opinion, a very dangerous route to run, particularly in the middle of the field and down around the goal line if you're going to get zone coverage. Your guy is going to run into trouble there. And the pass was led into yeah. that double coverage, too. Yeah. Well, we yeah. talked about how that reminded us of the unfortunate incident with Daryl Stingley when he was playing with the New England Patriots in a game with the Oakland Raiders, and Jack Tatum was the defensive back who delivered the hit that resulted in Stingley being paralyzed. I'm sure you guys have played in games where you've had situations like this. There's still three minutes left. Toledo has an outside chance of winning the game. How do you refocus? Because you still have to finish off the game if you're a player, guys. It's hard. It's hard. I, I was with the Detroit Lions team when uh, Mike Utley uh, was playing. And the year I left is the year that he was par uh, paralyzed. And Dennis Bird on the New York Jets, defensive lineman. I was on that team standing on the sideline uh, when Dennis Bird was hit in a way that caused him to be uh, very nearly paralyzed. And it's very difficult as a player to think about football now because all of a sudden football goes from being the most important thing in your life to being completely subordinated to what's really important. And what's really important is your life. And North Illinois uh, showed great sportsmanship uh, after the hit and then uh, cheering on Nick Moore as he leaves the stadium. And you think about Ray Smith who delivered the hit. He's a guy who will will feel and worry about that. You see that one sign that makes everybody feel better. You see Nick Moore raise his fist to give everybody the I'm gonna be okay sign. If we have an update for you, we certainly will bring it to you. Stay tuned to uh, ESPN, ESPN2, or uh, go to ESPN.com for further update on Nick Moore when we do have the information. Third down and four as we get back to football. Here's a pass over the middle that's dropped. And maybe Odom was thinking about what just happened on the last play, and who could blame him? Well, you need three scores. You have very little time. You might as well kick the field goal and at least give yourself a chance. You need three scores. They're not going to do that, though. They're going to go for it here on fourth down and four. Well, I don't get it. You need three. It doesn't matter which order you get them. You need three. I agree with you. If you don't get it here, you can only stop the clock once. You only have one time on left. Northern Illinois is going to get the ball back. Yeah, you want to extend the game. If you don't get it here, game's over. Sports Center coming up next. 
Kerkowski on fourth down, and Northern Illinois will take over. And Northern Illinois will win this football game. 28 to three, they have outscored the Rockets here in the second half on senior night. A place that Northern Illinois has not won since 1972. Joe Novak was a high school coach then, and Tom Hamstutz was a senior in high school. Joe Novak has never defeated Toledo anywhere. 0-8 coming into this game. And he did it under the most dire of circumstances. A redshirt freshman quarterback making his first start. His star running back banged up out three games, comes back tonight, playing on the road. Tremendous. Garrett Wolf to the 14-yard line. The Northern Illinois has had Toledo in their in their head because they have had so little success here for so long and it, it's almost the kind of thing that you get down and then start thinking here we go again but I think this team has taken on Joe Novak's persona Joe Novak a defensive end tough guy himself he has a very tough team in a league that throws the ball all over the place his team is a pounding running team and I think that kind of mentality is what allowed them to overcome that tradition here in the glass bowl and Joe Novak did not underplay the significance of this Wolf game at all. Area. We talked to him this week as Wolf takes it out to the 17. He knew how important this game was that if they didn't win this game, they had no chance at a bowl game. Well, in short, they finally exercised their demons. I mean, Toledo has been that for them all these years, the team they couldn't beat. Now, voila, they got it done. They'll play Western Michigan next Wednesday on ESPN2. And if they beat Western Michigan, they will go to the MAC title game. Northern Illinois loses that game. And Toledo beats Bowling Green next Tuesday on ESPN2. Toledo will go to the MAC title game. Keep in mind, Toledo is at Bowling Green, and it's a night game at 7 o'clock. They will know whether or not Northern Illinois beats Western Michigan, because that's a 135 afternoon game. And so that will shake up as, a, as an interesting day in the MAC. 140 yards rushing for Garrett Wolf in the second half on 21 carries. And again, if Wolf isn't there, do they give Adrian Davis all those carries? And, and does he get the job done? Probably not, based on the history of Wolf. And so with the win, North Illinois, Western Michigan, Toledo all at 5-2. and two. And again, if Western Michigan beats North Illinois, and Bowling Green beats Toledo, Western Michigan will go. But North Illinois controls its own destiny now. Win next week. And you were going to your first ever MAC championship game, and Garrett Wolf, a huge reason why. Who knows what the score would have been, what the outcome would have been without him playing tonight. I tell you, he played so much better in the second half. You just saw the confidence grow in him. Early in the game, he didn't look confident. He got it going, though. They got Adrian Davis into the game. Believe it or not, he's actually smaller than Garrett Wolf. He's 5'5", 150 pounds. Anthony Jordan on the tackle. And not that Davis is, a, is any slouch, but with... Garrett Wolf's injury and A.J. Harris's injury. And Davis has had to play, and Harris still out with a shoulder injury, and Wolf missing the last three games of the knee injury, but playing tonight. And probably in part because Joe Newbeck knew how big a game this was. And we asked him this week when we talked to him, would you play Garrett Wolf if you weren't sure he was 100% knowing how big of a game it was? And he said we'd have to wait and see because he knew that Garrett wanted to play. Well, he wasn't 100%. And it wasn't the ideal night to come back from injury with the cold turf, cold weather, snow, and wind. But he came back, and they played him, and they got the win. It's going to be a penalty here to delay a game. What you've got to think in terms of the balance is the importance of the game against how much it might set him back in terms of that injury. So Garrett Wolf is now over 1,000 yards rushing. Seven straight seasons. The only school with more consecutive seasons with a 1,000-yard rusher is Texas, and they've had guys like Cedric Benson and Ricky Williams. But Garrett Wolf last year led the back with 600 or 1,656 yards. Well, that's the mentality of Joe Novak. He wants to pound the ball, and no one can stop it. Dick Benner to boot it away. Toledo is out of timeouts. Needs three scores and only a minute and 19 seconds left. Well, they passed up the field goal that would have given them one of those three scores. And they might have been in this position here getting the punt with a chance to get a touchdown to maybe an onside kick. 
with a chance to go in if he can score. Odom taken down to the 50-yard line. That's why you have to extend the game. It's no different than in basketball taking fouls. You know, you take the points when you can to extend the game. If you roll your dice, voila, you lose. It's over. You know, but you want to kick the field goal and take another shot. You can come out and then try the onside kick. Now, it's really no choice. No, no shot at them to get three scores in a minute and 11 seconds. So Gretkowski with another opportunity to try to get Toledo some more points here and stay in the game. And another dropped ball, this one by Lefty. We've had about seven or eight drops by Toledo players. We mentioned that the last eight minutes have seemed like an hour. That's in part because of an injury to Nick Moore on this play. Well, he ran a slant down to the goal line, and Ray Smith came in and just drilled him. Nick Moore tried to protect himself from the hit, but did exactly the wrong thing which was duck his head. But fortunately, as he's being taken out, we see his arm moving, and we also saw his left leg move. Gradkowski on second down. Just throws it away. It'll be third down and 10. This is so big for Northern Illinois, guys. You think about what they've been through in this series. They've been dominated by Toledo. And some of those wins were back when the Huskies were not a good program. The early years under Joe Novak when they had a 23 game losing streak. But Novak turned the program around. But even then, they could not beat Toledo. The class of the Mac. But finally here in 2005, on the road in a place they haven't won in 33 years, they get it done and then are one win away from going to their first ever Mac title game, which will be seen on ESPN. Dawson gets the first down to the 40, but they need points. They don't need first downs at this stage. And really, you talk about Garrett Wolf, and he really came alive in the second half. But Dan Nicholson, the freshman quarterback, has just done a terrific job of holding this entire game plan together for Northern Illinois. He came off the bench last week against Central Michigan, threw for 320 yards, but it's a lot harder to start than it is to come off the bench. And this freshman has done admirably. But it's not over for them. They got to win next week. If they don't, and Toledo beats Bowling Green on ESPN as that passes out of bounds, then Toledo would still go to the MAC title game. Western Michigan, a team that didn't win a MAC game last year, is still in the mix as well. And certainly some great play out of guys like Dan Nicholson. But let's not forget the two key interceptions by Dustin Utschick in the second half. I mean, the last interception he got stopped the Toledo drop. He picked it off in the end zone. And he's had a big night. And that was on an ill-advised throw by Gradkowski, who was only 13 out of 30. 41% completion rate tonight. That is the worst of his career. He does complete this one. And Dawson is taken down to the 33. Gradkowski's pass complete to Trinity Dawson. Deion Smith makes the stop. We still do not have an update for you because of the, the HIPAA rules on, on Nick Moore. And when we do find out something, whether it's on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, or ESPN.com, when that information is made available, we will certainly give it to you. But uh, we will not be able to provide that for you here in the final uh, seconds of our game. Bradkowski's pass, and appropriately, it's intercepted on the final play by Alva Hensbro. Great night for Joe Novak. He doesn't care how cold that bath is right now. First win at Toledo since 1972, and first win ever for Novak against the Rockets. 35-17 is the final score in Toledo. Northern Illinois wins next week. It goes to the back championship game. Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, Stacey Dale Schumann, and our entire ESPN2 crew, Dave Pash, saying so long from Toledo. 35-17 the final. Sports Center is coming up next. Y'all gotta zoom in close, because I'm about to get my